the band and cue the cheerleaders. Oh, how we have waited to say that. Big sigh of relief. We are here for the first time in 259 days. The Lopes will tip off official hoops action. And while things may look different inside GCU Arena, Arena during these uncertain times, one thing remains the same. The love for the game will be on display tonight as GCU gears up for its first game of the 2020-2021 season against Grambling State. Kate Longworth coming at you just outside GCU Arena and uh, in partnership with Sneaky Big. We're coming at you live right now on Fox 10 Extra to bring you the Lopes free game show driven by Nissan. And I think I just let the stress out. I finally uncrossed every finger and toe because we are here the long awaited day and on this eve of Thanksgiving. I am so thankful to be coming into your home tonight with college basketball alongside my colleagues, Barry Butel, Scott Williams. Guys, a lot has happened since we are here together. The first weekend in March. And wow, the world looks a lot different now. But after a lot going on behind the scenes, it's starting to feel a little bit like the same. To be up here with you guys, you still can't hear me. So that's just like last year. Never changed, right? We still can't hear Kate. This is unbelievable, and the, obviously the enthusiasm is uh, it's, it's held back a little bit uh, because of the pandemic that we're all experiencing, but a little bit is returning here tonight, a little bit of normalcy is back, at least GCU basketball is back with a new head coach in, in Bryce Drew. I love it. This is fantastic. This is what college basketball is all about. Having the students, the cheerleaders, the dance team, the band, they are rocking and rolling Coach Price, GCU basketball era, and I am so excited to be back with you guys to call all the action all season long. Well, the new head coach in his uh, debut here tonight, the 14th head coach in GCU men's basketball history, is Bryce Drew. After five years at Valparaiso and three more at Vanderbilt, he's the new head coach. Yeah, Coach Drew does not mess around. He likes to get in that lab and get after it. Very instructional way he works with his player. He likes to build a chemistry and a rapport with these guys. Wants to get to know them as people so they can trust that he's got their best interest as a player. They'll play hard nose. They'll play up tempo. They'll play good defense. They'll be fundamentally sound all year long. Well, one guy that he's no doubt familiar with, a lot of us are definitely familiar with the senior now, the big man, Alessandro Labor, their leading scorer and rebounder a year ago. He is absolutely fantastic. The big man can go inside, use that big frame finish above the rim but he's also got a nice touch on a perimeter as well not afraid to mix up the inside the outside game has added about 15 to 20 pounds of muscle to what coach Bryce Drew told me this year but he hasn't lost any of his speed or his quickness he'll be a big factor in what the Lopes do this year well it'll be a high low game and at that guard position boy he stepped onto this campus as a freshman and he looked like a senior the rating whack freshman of the year Javon Black Blackster Jr. Yeah, he was fantastic. I didn't know if I was going to buy the hype at the start of the season. This kid really impressed me. Just so poised out there on the floor. Plays beyond his years for sure. Three and a half assists a game. He was the only player in Division I basketball to go for 300 points, 150 rebounds, and 100 steals. Wow. He's a thief in shorts. He's only going to get better this year. Those assist numbers are going to come way up now that he's got some more targets to throw the ball to. Well, between Labor and Blackshear, first and second team all whack selections coming in to the preseason. No doubt they'll be carrying the load once again for GCU. But how about the return of the high flyer? Wheels are up again, folks. The runway is clear for Oscar Freire. Well, I love to see Oscar Freire back out there. The kid is absolutely electric in basketball short sneakers, finishes above the rim. But what I like the best is he plays defense. Yep. He flat out gets after guys, blocking shots, getting steals, running the floor, and finishing it above the rim. Oscar Freyer joins a list that uh, 
A lot of newcomers who will talk throughout the game about many of them, including a big man in Ashbjorn Midgard, the transfer from Wichita State, a seven-footer. So there's some twin tower situations against the start now against Grambling. Grambling State comes in 17 and 15 a year ago, 11 and 7 overall in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. They are tonight's opponent. Yeah, there is. Kind of hard to hear you out here, but let's talk about this scrambling team a little bit. They are going to mix up a lot of different defenses, who may confuse this low team as they try to get to know one another out there. We're going to play a lot of 1 2 2 zone, a lot of 2 1 2 3 zone, different half court traps. So the Lopes are going to have to take care of that basketball because they are an athletic bunch. We have set the scene for the game. Let's send it back over to Kate. Well, guys, oh, I, I think stop yelling now. I, this is unbelievable. Oh, I don't think it'll last long, but I think uh, we are all very excited to be out here. We've only been talking on Zoom for months, and I know a lot of safety protocols are on place here on campus. We're excited to see the game back, but there's a lot that's gone into it behind the scenes and what we'll be looking for on the court tonight. So, Scott, with the team just getting out there tonight, you know, obviously they want to be the top guy on the scoreboard at the end of this. But what do you want to see? What little victories can be accomplished by Coach Drew? And Barry, too, if you'll just touch on how we got to this point, what GCU has put into place safety-wise to let the kids go out there and play tonight. Now this team is really looking to face somebody other than themselves. They've been out practice long now for several months, only going against one another. And that sometimes gets difficult when the other guy across from you knows what you're supposed to do because he's got the scouting report. So they look forward to being and how they can execute against somebody that doesn't know what they plan on doing out there on the floor. Coach Bryce Drew will be looking to see how his guys handle the pressure and live fire because they didn't get much opportunities to scrimmage this year. It is amazing. It is nothing short of really a miracle that we are here tonight to bring you this broadcast. So many people, so much uh, protocol from rapid testing to the teams being tested on a continuous basis to officials that arrive here that can't get out of their cars before they're tested and cleared to come into the building. Every protocol is placed in place to get this game underway, and I think we'll take it day by day. Good Lord willing, we'll have a complete season. this college basketball is back cheer and dance in the house and so is the band and right after the break we're going to hear from new head coach bryce drew bryce drew as he sits down with our barry right after this Anderson Ford strongly supports law enforcement. We're honoring military, first responders, and medical professionals with a Blue Friday sale event. On top of huge incentives from Ford and Sanderson Ford Blue Friday sale discounts, we're doubling Ford's bonus cash for those who serve. Save over $8,000 on over 100 F-150 Super Crew trucks in stock at Sanderson Ford. To all those who serve, we salute you. Thank you for your service. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show. Kate Longworth coming out to outside GCU Arena as we gear up for tonight's game against Grambling State. And we'll be coming at you all season long for these home games on Fox 10 Extra. And uh, that question mark you've seen after a Benedictine, well, get used to that because in these uncertain times of COVID-19, opponents, they may change, but as we have mentioned, the love of the game will remain the same here for the Lopes as they get the schedule started with a home heavy uh, schedule here to start things off in 2020. And now we head to uh, Barry who got a chance to sit down just a few moments ago with head coach Bryce Drew. Barry? 
Thanks, Kate. I am joined by the head coach of GCU men's basketball, Bryce Drew. And Bryce, uh, we are here. We have finally arrived. It's the uh, 14th head coach in GCU basketball history. Your debut tonight against Grambling State. How do you feel in this uh, debut performance? Well, it's been fun watching college basketball all day. Um, it's a little weird watching with, with hardly any fans or no fans and, and all the distancing, but I can tell you and I can tell all the GCU fans that we are excited to play. We are tired of against practicing against each other. I could imagine. You've got uh, quite a deep bench as well, and let's talk a little bit about some of the players, especially those that are perhaps familiar to GCU fans. That's the senior. We lead it off with Alessandro Laver. What are you seeing from the big man? You know, Alessandro's had a great offseason. Uh, we've been uh, set back a couple times with some quarantines, like many other teams in the country, but Alessandro has, has put on a lot of muscle. He's gotten a lot stronger. He's moving faster. We're hoping we're going to see some of the fruit of all that work tonight in the game. The uh, leading returner from uh, scoring and rebounding a season ago for GCU. He'll have a, another big man down low helping him out. But let's lo look at the, uh, the freshman Black defending Black mm. uh, Freshman of the Year in Javon Blackshear Jr. What a phenomenal freshman year he had a year ago. You know, it's so hard as a freshman point guard uh, stepping into college, and you learn a lot on the job. And he played 35 minutes a game, so he really had to learn a lot, um, good and bad, out on the court. We're hoping he can use those experiences he learned last year and, uh, and, and pick up where he left off and, and also improve his game. You know, he's worked a lot on his shooting. Um, and trying to extend his range a little bit. You know, hopefully he can knock down some outside shots that'll open the paint to make it a lot easier for him. Sean Miller Moore, Mikey Dixon also at that guard spot. We'll keep an eye on the two of them as well. And one guy that is back after uh, missing out last year is that forward, Oscar Freyer. He can be a human highlight reel. What do you see from him? Well, we are very glad that Oscar is back. Uh, you know, he's a, such a dynamic player. Um, finishes above the rim. He's also shooting the ball much better. What we're most impressed is the strides he's made off the court. Um, he's put on about 20 pounds in the offseason and has really devoted himself to his body and then also in the classroom. So we're extremely proud where Oscar's at, and uh, we're looking forward to a great senior year from him. Yeah, he could uh, set new D1 marks for steals and blocks for GCU when it's all said and done this season. I mentioned earlier when we were talking about Alessandro Laver that he's going to have a, a twin tower down there. Mm -hmm. and Asborn Midgard, the transfer, the seven-footer, 270, I believe, is what he's tipping the scales at from Wichita State. He's 270, and believe it or not, last year he was even bigger than that. And wow. so um, Coach uh, Jordan Jackson, our strength coach, has been fabulous. Um, we've knocked a little bit of weight off him, but he's just as strong as he was before. Um, and, and he is a presence down low. You know, um, I, I don't care where you are in the country, to have a seven-foot 270 is a luxury. And um, we're super excited for him to uh, put a GCU uniform for the first time tonight. Uh, and waiver granted for another big man, a, a freshman, and Dima Zador. Uh, Dima brings a lot of athleticism. You know, he's uh, still very young, um, was 19 when he got to campus, even after two years of college. And um, he's just coming into his game. So um, he can make some plays, some turnaround plays, some blocks, some electrifying finishes at the rim. And uh, we love his versatility. So he'll see, he'll see uh, uh, time at both positions, the four and the five. And we think he has a really bright future here. Sean Miller Moore, I mentioned him at the guard spot. And Jaden Stone is a, a freshman that you're pretty excited about, no doubt. We are. Jaden was highly recruited, uh, came out of high school, uh, shoots the ball really well. Um, um, very athletic on the wing. And so, um, you know, freshmen coming to your first game of college, there's a lot of jitters. we got a lot of freshmen who will be dressing up in a college uniform for the first time. You know, hopefully those jitters will leave quickly and they can settle in and play basketball. Under all of these conditions, um, how, how has it been? How has the team responded? How has the coaching staff? You've obviously been here since, since March, so you've, you've been with this team. How prepared are they ready to, to tip things off here tonight? You know, there is a lot of unknowns yeah. coming into tonight. No doubt. Uh, we've had no scrimmages. We haven't got to practice or play against anyone else. We have over half of our team is completely new. We have a new coaching staff, so players are hearing different terminology, different words. And so there's a lot of unknowns, but there's also a lot of excitement. You know, excitement to start the season out. Just excitement to play basketball. Yeah. Um, again, it's, it's been about 10 months with, without it. Um, so it's been a long time, and we are ready to lace them up and play. Well, congratulations. Welcome to GCU once again. We look forward to tipping things off in just a few moments. Thank you. All right, Bryce Drew, the head coach of GCU men's basketball. Kate, we'll send it back over to you. Thank you so much, Barry. We can't wait to see Coach Drew and the team back out on the hardwood. And it, we've warned you, it's going to look a little different in there, but the crowd is still here. There you see President Mueller. Is that him? I'm not sure. Well, the good news is I have him live in the flesh, socially distanced, of course, right after this. When we come back with more Lopes pregame live right here on Fox 10 Extra.
a kid, I always dreamed of being a Division I athlete. GCU supported that dream, and they also allowed me to get an education. So when I came to GCU, I was able to transfer enough credits in to fast track my education. So I graduated in three years with a master's, and I did it debt-free because I had athletic and academic scholarships. I'm Mackenzie, and I earned my MBA from Grand Canyon University. There's a thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. She said she wasn't hungry. She only wanted a bite. But this isn't just a patty melt. This is a Whataburger patty melt, the all-time favorite, with two all-beef patties, Monterey Jack, grilled onions, and creamy pepper sauce. So one bite became two, and two became mine. Just a bite, huh? Good thing she's your other all-time favorite. Good thing there's the patty melt at Whataburger. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan as the Lopes gear up for the Tigers of Grambling State. We're coming at you live on Fox 10 Extra in partnership with Sneaky Big, Kate Longworth. And I am joined now by uh, President Brian Mueller, who, I mean, you pulled off a miracle, I want to say, to have everyone out here. It's been a long time coming, but we have just been waiting for college basketball. It truly is the heart and soul out here at GCU University and you get to play basketball tonight. Um, we're going to get to that. But first, so much has happened in the world since we last saw each other back in March. And I know for you and for this campus, safety is at the top. So what has GCU gone through over these past six months just to keep faculty, teachers, and students safe here on campus? You know, it hasn't been easy for anybody, um, and it hasn't been easy for us as well. But I am very, very proud of our students. Um, we, we finished the semester, we started in March uh, to go online, and we finished the semester very strong. You know, we, that's a strength of ours. Online delivery is a strength of ours. Our faculty are trained, our students are all on the system. And so when they left campus, we finished the semester very, very strong. In fact, it boosted our enrollments for the summer. A lot of kids couldn't get jobs, and so they just kept taking classes online over the summer. Most universities are down 10 to 20% in enrollment this year as a result of all that. We're actually up. Uh, our new goal was 8,000, and we actually had 8,400. Uh, we exceeded our total goal by 600, so we're over 23,000 students. And so, in a weird kind of way, we were able to use this to our advantage. I'm really happy to report we did a lot of things uh, in terms of social distancing, max wearing, um, uh, cutting uh, our classes in half uh, in terms of social distancing in the classroom. We are less than 1%. Uh, active positive cases right now of our student body. And so, uh, again, it hasn't been easy. You're asking 18 and 19 year old kids to make a lot of sacrifices, but they did, and it's really paid off for us. Yeah, stepping up, taking responsibility. It's so wonderful to see, especially from the youth. And I know um, you kind of just referenced it, but you guys have had that online platform in place. And while many companies have been trying to adjust to that over the past couple months with people working from home, how has it helped that you guys were already so fluent in that and that students knew how and can still take classes from home. Well, a part of it is our platform. The students were all familiar with the platform. The faculty members were familiar with the platform. It's our own platform. And so the confidence the faculty instilled in the students early on was really important. Uh, the students got confident and learning took place. And, and so it just really went well. And we were very fortunate to be in that position. The other thing we had done is we had set up all of our people to work from home as kind of a fringe benefit the last couple of years. And so moving people uh, home, being able to do their jobs from home was another big benefit of ours. And so uh, it really has gone better than you could expect. And you obviously have um, health at the forefront of your mind. So tonight, we know how important that six man is inside GCU Arena. The best fans in the country, so many have said. What will things look like tonight? What protocols are in place? And uh, what's the crowd situation? Well, you know, it, yeah, it is It is not going to be the, the, the same. But, it's, but people are rallying. Uh, and so we were only allowed 250 students in, in tonight. Uh, we'll have our cheerleaders, we'll have our band, we'll have the 250 students. We've dressed the, 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 uh, the arena in a very interesting way. You will see that in a few minutes. So that will be fun. Uh, but I think the, the, uh, the, the crowd noise, uh, the volume, the excitement, People will really be surprised by it. We're really hoping it, it, uh, it, it energizes our team, and, and we think it's going to be a, a good show on television. I saw Ron Burgundy in there. I'm going to hunt him down for an interview. But also who I'm looking forward to talking to tonight at halftime, Coach Drew. 
Uh, he gets to make his debut here for GCU. What does he bring to this men's basketball team? It's an amazing uh, story, the Drew family, going back to his father, who is in the uh, NCAA Basketball Hall of Fame, an unbelievable guy, uh, his, his, his brother Scott at Baylor, and now him being here. He had a great run at Valparaiso, went to the NCAA tournament four times, got the Vanderbilt job, uh, went to the NCAA tournament his first year, recruited two kids that got drafted in the NBA in the top 15. Unreal. He's an incredible recruiter. And so having him here and he, with his experience is, is, is unbelievable for us. Who he is as a person, his faith commitment fits perfectly here. But then he brought three big time assistants. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these guys have come from places like UCLA, Kentucky, Indiana, Vanderbilt, the New Jersey Nets. Um, and so their network in the world, literally, in terms of the basketball world, has put us in a different place. In fact, uh, John Calipari from Kentucky called Mr. Colangelo the other day and said, you know, you guys have a very top of the line uh, power five coaching staff at Grand Canyon. That's so exciting to see everything uh, kind of take flight starting tonight. And just kind of when you're talking about some of his characteristics, you also got to think of Molly Miller bringing that. She brings out the best in her players, that character on and off the court. What does Coach Miller bring? Also a new coach to the program on the women's side. Unbelievable uh, charisma. Yes. Uh, her love for basketball, her ability to teach the game, to inspire student athletes, to have them come together as a group, uh, perform in the classroom, her, her ability to inspire our students to want to support what we're doing, people are going to be amazed. I, I'm just telling you, if you haven't been to our girls' basketball games, when these things open up and, and we can bring fans again, you're going to want to come and watch them play. It's going to be very exciting. And we're very excited. We'll actually have some of those games with Coach Miller and um, the women's basketball team coming up on Fox 10 Extra throughout uh, the season. So that's great. And thank you so much, President Mueller, for being here and all you are doing behind the scenes. So tonight's taking center stage. We can watch some college basketball we need it <laughs> absolutely do thank you all right and when we come back as mentioned we will be bringing you coach miller to talk with her and i mentioned i've got a to-do list tonight i'm hunting down ron burgundy i've heard he's kind of a big deal but i'm gonna see if i can find my way over to him but first coach miller right after this we'll be right back When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. You've got to have a motor to play in the system. Oh, oh. There you go, guys, guys! Here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. Come on, Tia! Good hustle! Good go, good, there you go, good job! You want to play fast? This is how we're going to play fast. Camp Grit might not be my favorite camp day. Okay, it's probably Camp Lockdown. Play, 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 get him, jump, jump! We are going to cut down nets because we're going to be great defenders. Start with your left, trace with your right. Show me a bucket right here. Atta, baby. We're going to cut down the nets. Those are the famous words that we hope we'll be hearing in March from Coach Molly Miller, the head women's basketball coach here at GCU, joining me now on set. Um, hopefully we have every finger and toe crossed. We'll say that a lot because these are crazy times, but hopefully taking the court on Friday for your coaching debut here at GCU. But first, uh, what was the draw to come out here and coach the Lopes? 
You know, I really, um, level didn't motivate me. I wanted to be able to coach the right way, do things the right way, and compete for championships. And GCU just had those resources, the investment, the commitment to athletics has been phenomenal. Um, I also think when you're talking about just a family and faith-oriented atmosphere, that's what I want to be a part of. That's what I love. So it was kind of a match made. You know, we parallel, and, and the standards are high, and I love to compete, and I want to compete and win. So I'm very, very excited to get started here and I think it's a great place for me. And you mentioned some of those tangibles you want to see that you like to see in the game and that you yourself bring to this uh, squad. But what do you want to see in your players? What kind of players do you want to go through this program, both on and off the court? Yeah, I, I want them to enjoy the game of basketball. I mean, I played as a college athlete, and I loved the game of basketball, and I love my experiences. So if I can give them a love for the game um, and that trickles down to each other and we just can share experience, I think 10, 10 years down the road, you're going to be looking at um, the scores, maybe the experiences, definitely. Um, so you're going to see inspired players on and off the floor, um, bought in players. They're already doing a great job of kind of buying into the system. So I'm very anxious and excited just to use that momentum to carry us forward. Every day we step on the court is a blessing, especially in this time year. Yeah, you can say that again. And I won't make you brag about yourself, but I'll brag about you. Back-to-back -back NCAA Division II Coach of the Year with a record of 67-1 and one during that time. I mean, those numbers themselves speak for them. Uh, but for you, um, when you come to this program here at GCU, that energy, how do you model it for your players because we were just watching you mic'd up and uh, sometimes we have to search for that type of video from a coach. That just all came out right away from you. You can yeah. see that energy on the sideline. I, I do think it all comes back just loving the game and loving, I don't feel like I get up in the morning and go to work at J-O-B. Like <laughs> I feel like I get up and I get to do what I love every single day, which is mentoring young kids. Um, I'm a player's coach, so I know that energy is infectious. So if I can give them every ounce of energy I have, then I hope they're gonna play hard because they see that in their coach and hopefully that's inspiring. At the end of the day, we're all kind of in this thing together and I'm gonna be their biggest cheerleader also. Well, it sounds like a natural fit here at GCU. Thank you so much, Coach Miller. Best of luck this year. And you talk about the integrity and the passion and that energy. Well, that's what we see inside GCU Arena. Even when it is a limited crowd, they're bringing it tonight for the Lopes' first game of the season. We'll be right back with more Lopes pregame show coming at you here on Fox 10 Extra right after this. We made USAA insurance for members like Kate. A former Army medic made of the flexibility to handle whatever Monday has in store and tackle four things at once. So when her car got hit, she didn't worry. She simply filed a claim on her USAA app and said, I've got this. USAA insurance has made the way Kate needs it. Easy. She can even pick her payment plan, so it's easy on her budget and her life. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan coming at you here on Fox 10 Extra. We're going to talk basketball, but first a quick timeout to check in on Andy Stankowitz's baseball team, giving back to the community. The uh, players gathered safely with their mask on, gloves, and gave food to the community, those in need through St. Mary's Food Bank. Absolutely incredible, especially during these times, people recognizing that there's obviously more to the games played on the field and the court, trying to help those in need. And we're all out here hoping everyone can have a safe and happy, healthy Thanksgiving. And uh, we also want the food, right? That's what Thanksgiving can also be about as you count your blessings. Check out what the players like to see. Mac and cheese on the table along with some stuffing. Sweet potatoes for Mikey Dixon. And meanwhile, folks at home on the eve of Thanksgiving, I hope you're hungry for some college basketball because it is finally here. Right after this, we're serving it up. Once you've been to hell and back, there's not much left to fear. When the boogeyman goes to sleep at night, he checks under his bed for me. Have you ever wondered who Waldo's hiding from? Me. Not even the cougars of LA are enough to scare me. 
But if I get into an accident, I'm calling the boss. Sweet James. If you've been hurt, don't back down. Call Sweet James. From the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Orium, where tonight Bryce Drew makes his coaching debut with the Lopes, hosting the Tigers from Grambling State. Good evening and welcome to GCU Basketball alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams behind the glass. I'm Barry Butel. Kate Longworth will be along in just a, a moment. Well, here we are, Scott. By the uh, grace of all things almighty, we are here to bring you GCU basketball, the powers of a number of people, but we are ready for basketball and it couldn't come at a better time. Yes, very thankful on this Thanksgiving Eve to be back here in GCU Arena doing some college basketball because this team has got something to prove. I got Coach Bryce True has really got this team amped up, ready to take the floor. Yeah, 14th head coach in uh, D1 or in GCU history, Bryce True taking the helm as head coach. Yeah, passion. That's what this guy personifies out there on, and he wants that from his players as well. Wants them to be a smart bunch, but he wants them to play out there with a commitment on both sides of the basketball, value the ball offensively, and get after people defensively. Well, one guy he knows he can count on is the big man, Alessandro Laver. Yeah, he's got all whack performer this year he pre, uh, first team selection can do it from the inside can do it from the outside has added about 15 pounds of muscle since we saw him 257 days ago well they take on a Grambling State team that was 17 and 15 a year ago 11 and 7 in the Southwestern Athletic Conference we'll talk more about the Tigers from Grambling State as we get things started but now let's send it down to Paul Denuser with tonight's opening prayer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the beautiful GCU Arena for tonight's men's basketball matchup between the Tigers of Grambling State University and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise if you are able. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with the word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Joshua Gillespie, this year's Havoc's president and a junior majoring in finance and economics. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this evening and thank you for the gifts that you've given us and that we can gather here tonight and um, honor you, Lord. And I pray for safety for all of the players, coaches, and officials involved. And God, I pray that you'd make this a great night of fun for all involved. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Joshua. And now let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's contest. First of all, for the Tigers of Grambling State University. At guard, a six-foot senior, number 10, Travel Cunningham. At guard, a 6'6 senior, number 11, Kelton Edwards. At forward, a 6'8 senior, number 21, Terion Randolph. At guard, a 6'7 senior, number 22, Prince Moss. And at forward, a 6'9 senior, number 30, Brian Thomas. The Tigers play in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. They're led by head coach Dante Jackson. Assistant coaches Winston Hines, Demetrius Moore, and Kyle Jones.
I'm not to tell you about GCU. We'll get back to Grambling State in just a moment. Bryce Drew is in his first season as head coach. Here is his starting lineup brought to you by Talking Stick Resort. Javon Blackshear Jr., Sean Miller Moore, Oscar Freyer, Alessandra Labor, and Ashbjorn Mitgard. Yeah, the big Ashty. We're going to keep our eye on him this night. He's 270 pounds of raw steel down underneath the basket, throws his body around. He's going to be a space eater, a rim protector, and he's going to chew glass. That's what Coach Bryce has challenged him every night, and that's what the Lopes missed a year ago. Five seasons at Valparaiso, three more at Vanderbilt, three trips to the NCAA tournament. This is 19th season overall as a head coach. Assistant coaches Jamal Walker, Ed Schilling, and Casey Shaw. Director of player development is Ryan Lightfoot. The director of re recruiting is A.C. Moyi Koibu. Director of video operations, Peyton Prudhomme. Strength and conditioning coach, Jordan Jackson. The athletic trainer is Jordy Hackett. And the student athletic development director is Sean Pryor. As I mentioned, Grambling State, Dante Jackson, their head coach in his fourth season. Here is his starting five, Travell Cunningham, Kelton Edwards, Prince Moss, Terion Randolph and Brian Thomas. Yeah, all of these guys, uh, don't sleep on this talented team right here. We had an opportunity to put our eyes out on them. They are athletic and quick like cats out there on the floor. is gonna have to protect that ball tonight or they're gonna be running back on defense, scrambling to try to catch up with these Tigers. Let's get to our Sanderson Ford keys to the game. The best play on a new forward is at Sanderson Ford. Well, there's more of the keys than all season long. You gotta respect that rock value. Uh, placed offensively execution. Everyone's got to do their job. That means move with a purpose, set good strong, you know, cut good and strong, set good screens, make good passes on time and on target. No unforced errors and a commitment to defend. Coach Drew's going to demand that his players out there on the floor don't give up easy pain scores. No uncontested three-point shots. Then they got to rebound the ball and finish off that defensive possession and he wants to get out and run on misses. And then the last thing, all for one and one for all. Establish a team chemistry early in the season by playing for one another. You know, how do you do that? You cover for a teammate should he blow a defensive rotation. You make an extra pass on offense that leads to a better shot and a score. You enforce, you encourage your teammate if he gets down. You build him back up. Are you ready? Here we go. The Bryce Drew era underway here at Grand Canyon University in possession GCU. Javon Blackshear Jr. comes out, moves to his right, takes it back from Freyer. Labor to Mikey Dixon. Dixon to Freyer. Looks inside. Bounce pass to Asborn Midgard. Back out. Quick ball movement. Freyer. Labor. Puts it down on the floor. Drives. Kicks back out. And gets picked off, but it goes out of bounds. Prince Moss. Yeah, they're quick. They're going to get their hand. Their, their, hands on a lot of balls out there. That particular play looked like Laver thought uh, Javon Blackshear was going to float down to the corner. So there's a little miscommunication here. Maybe just some opening jitters for the first three to four minutes of this basketball game. Eight on the shot clock. Blackshear looks in. Out to Dixon. Mitgar, Laver. Back to Javon. Four, three on the shot clock. Stops, pops. Good! Well, that was nice right there. A little two-man basketball after they got the ball in bounds. With Labor set a nice screen. Javon Blackshear, who has improved his shooting, according to Bryce Drew, has been working hard in the lab trying to get that stroke fine-tuned. Grambling loses the handle there. Oscar Frere with the poke away, something he has done so many times. I think that just ties him for the lead in GCU history for steals. Down low, right hand, oh, doesn't drop, but Frere's there. Extra possessions, Frere doing the little things to help his team. Oh, look at this man, truck! You nailed it, Barry. That was exactly what that was. Too big, too strong, too many kilos down there for the Tigers. Hopes out to an early lead. Prince Moss drives, travel. Wow, look at the big fella. Labor really got over and slid his foot good. Now look at this one right here. Just a nice little spin move inside. Gathers himself, goes up with power, and puts it in with the left hand. Gotta like that. GCU off to a nice start. 
Ronnie Hernandez, Matthew Ruckus in, and Levon Zakarian are the officials tonight. In the corner, Freyer. Off the mark, pushed out by Labor. Look at the Twin Towers. That one doesn't happen. And the Tigers come up with the rebound. Here they come up the floor. Cunningham. Moves right. Oh, look at the defense by Blackshot on the run. Up top, swatted away. Good defensive play there by Terry and Randolph. Yeah, Blackshirt is going to give up a lot of size there, but look at Blackshirt. Oh. Goes back and gets it again. Off the glass with a kiss. Wow, oh, they've, got, they've gotten their hands on three or four times down the floor. They've gotten balls deflected or stolen, and they got everybody up off the bench and excited about that one. JBJ working hard defensively, gives it over to Mikey Dixon, who powers it right to the rack. Lopes have forced four turnovers on this 6-0 start against Grambling State at GCU Arena. Well, that's what you need. You, you need that commitment to the defensive side of the ball. Lopes did not have that last year. A couple years ago, back in 2017, when they faced this Grambling State Tigers team, they put together a series of games, four games where they held their opponent under 60 points. Grambling State was one of those victims. Scoring only 57 points, got blown out by 32. Lopes tried to do that same sort of thing again. Put heavy pressure on this Tigers team defense. Well, Cunningham walking things off. The senior from Chicago, Illinois came up, hobbled. Blackshear allowed, jumped in on that opportunity and stole the ball away. Vince Moss back up. Randall, near side. Peyton Taylor. And the Grambling Tigers on the board, Kelton Edwards. Nice shot by that young man. He put a little two-piece move that time on Mikey Dixon. It was good defense, just better offense. Look at this little three-quarter court press here. Get the steal. Telegraph that one. Takes it all the way to the bucket. Terry on Randolph. Yeah, that timeout really worked well for him. They were able to get the score. Now they've gotten a stop to go right back to their trap once again. Blackshirt looks left. Frayer quickly, turn around, labor. A little bit of hand, but he follows up with the bucket. Yeah, they, they went like a, once they got the ball into the scoring area, that half court zone off uh, defense had a lot of holes on it. They found labor right down there on that left block. Randolph near side, Peyton Taylor. Taylor drives. A little floater high off the glass doesn't happen. Frayer able to keep it in. And Frayer, he does the play of everything. It steals. Rebounds the ball on defensive end, the offensive end, shoots the threes. How about that, Mark Dixon? Mike Dixon, he's looking for a shot from behind the arc. One for two now from behind the arc, shooting that three ball. Taylor, three. Taylor. Randolph, on by Labor. Coming out is Thomas. Near side of Edwards. Beyond the arc. A little heavy. Battle there between the Twin Towers. Yeah, I like the way the big Ashty went out there and claimed that basketball. Floater doesn't go for Blackshear. You know, he's not a stiff. He rebounded that ball outside of his position. Yeah, I, you know, sometimes you hear about a guy 270, you wonder how he's going to be able to move. He's shown some good mobility in the early part of this game. Lopes on the court have a bucket. We've got legs like tree trunks down there battling with big number 30. Indeed. Wow. Move on Labor. Doesn't go. Midgard with the rebound. Midgard doing a nice job blocking out on that weak side. Long shots, presents long rebounds, and he had that whole side of the basket cover. Shoots it from three. Oh, probably ill advised. Oh, Javon Blackshirt sure took one of the chops. He's all right. Lopes have the rebounding margin seven to three. Time out on the floor, 15, 13 to go. How about Mikey Dixon? Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna run and get open looks, you gotta rebound the basketball, push it down the floor. Javon Blackshear always with his eyes open finds Mikey Dixon for the three. 
Sanderson Ford strongly supports law enforcement. We're honoring military, first responders, and medical professionals with a Blue Friday sale event. On top of huge incentives from Ford and Sanderson Ford Blue Friday sale discounts, we're doubling Ford's bonus cash for those who serve. Save over $8,000 on over 100 F-150 Super Crew trucks in stock at Sanderson Ford. To all those who serve, we salute you. Thank you for your service. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. TCU basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By Herf Jones, by your side. By Community Tire Pros, serving Arizona since 1945. And by Talking Stick Resort, play in style. Beautiful night in Phoenix, Arizona. And the debut of head coach Bryce Jew at the helm of GCU men's basketball. Let's send it down to the third member of our broadcast team, Kate Longworth. 101, 100 and oh, sorry, sorry. I don't know if you heard me. I was just doing my exercises. Kind of a big deal down here. Just joined here by Ron Burgundy and many, many cutouts down here. A lot of famous Phoenix stars uh, down here from the sports scene to folks we've seen out here at GCU games. There are 250 fans in the stands all safely, socially distanced, masks are on and you do see a couple players or I mean a couple fans in the stands next to each other. They're probably roommates or family members already in each other's pod, if you will. Safety first on the mind so we can get back to playing the game that we love. Right guys? Basketball, it is here. Thank goodness. The King's here. Thank you very much. That's pretty good Elvis you did there, Barry. Thank you very much. <laughs> James. Stone in the game for GCU in the paint, outscoring Grambling six to two. That was at the shot clock going off, but he got it off in time, but unsuccessful in the shot. I give some credit to the Tigers defensively coming to that timeout. They really locked in defensively. Lopes had nothing, settled for a desperation three at the buzzer. Sean Miller Moore on the court for GCU as well. Yeah, the coach Bruce Bryce Drew said he's going to use at least eight guys tonight here in this first half. He hopes to try to get nine or ten, but the game will dictate that. Team is the door. Also on the floor and was instrumental in that ball going out of bounds. Look at those eyes on coach. But I tell you what, <laughs> those are eyes of a guy who has played in the NCAA tournament a few times. He, he's focused, locked in. Making sure these guys know what they're supposed to be doing. And remember, they got some new pieces out there playing together for the first time. So, be a lot of instruction going on. Careful protocol with basketballs as well. Stone. Near side. Sean Miller Moore. Back to Blackshirt. Zidore. Waver transfer from Weaver State. Lecture stops. Stone moves in. Stops. Pops. Too heavy for Stone. Yeah, he didn't make that one. He got a little extra adrenaline pump right now. <laughs> the first game of the year, but I like that little one dribble pull up jump shot in the mid range game. It, you don't see a lot of guys execute that very well, but his form looked excellent on that attempt. Edwards turning. Doesn't go. Pulled down by another big man in Demon's Ador. How about that length? <laughs> we got some pogo sticks for legs. Remind me of that kid, Bryce Opo. And a good bucket there from Javon Blackshear Jr. Yeah, man, JBJ, his shot does look much better. Coach Drew's right. These kids really put in the time, and it's showing here early. Slowly moving up, Peyton Taylor. They only gave him credit for two on that one, Barry. He must have said he had a toe on the line. Cobb drives it off the glass, pulled down by Mitgar. Already we're seeing rebounding. Pass. 
Swatted away by the Tigers, bringing it up. Edwards, Edwards on the drive. Stop. Yeah, he got a foul there on that drive. A little body contact. If you're a coach, you don't mind that at all. <laughs> you get him early, make him take a side out of bounds. No harm done. Sean Miller Moore, a call for the foul. The transfer from Oregon State. Native of Toronto, Ontario, Gabe McLaughlin comes in for Ashbjorn Midgard. Gabe sitting out last year, redshirt season, coming back from an injury as well. Yeah, I'm interested to see how this kid does. He's a good kid, he always had a smile, always when he wasn't able to play, cheering for his teammates. He's got nursing a little bit of a knee thing right now, but out there snatching boards. Right there he did. He was on this court probably last time with in a game action, Brian probably was leading Basha to that state title. Yeah, like some thousand, 1,400 days ago. There's something crazy I read like that. So, you know he's excited to be back on the floor, back here in his hometown. He's going to have some nervous energy, but uh, I hope this kid, I hope he has a fantastic season because he's a, a fine young man. The door at the line. This kid looks good. I, I like his body makeup. He's got a nice little stroke out there on the floor. He's got live legs. I think GCU's added some players. You look at some of their their numbers coming in and on the stat sheet, and you kind of go, eh, I don't know, you know, a couple points, a couple boards. But when you see him out here performing, you know, that it's already showing some good signs. Great work with Jordan Jackson, their strength coach. The door was up. Uh, Initially recruited by Bryce Drew and Casey Shaw on staff at Vanderbilt. They didn't have any scholarships left, so they elected to go to Weber State. They're reunited here at GCU. Oh, wow, three white shirts just down there crashing that glass. Hey, McLaughlin inside, got a little hand on it to the Tigers. Loose ball picked up. By Cameron Christian. Yeah, a little sloppy right now offensively. Like I said, that heavy adrenaline pump, first time out there, putting on that white uniform. And the you know, guys will we'll settle down here shortly. Really, no opportunities, Coach Drew said. No scrimmages, no, no exhibition games. Nobody in a yellow jersey inside. You gotta you wonder if this early season action here and played almost uh, nine minutes now that. These guys aren't getting a little winded. They're getting a little sloppy with the basketball yeah, out there. Yeah, they're yeah. missing shots. They're getting a little sloppy. They're missing free throws. Another turnover. Quickly, McLaughlin up to Sean Miller Moore. Lost the handle on it a bit. Looking to turn, pivot. Oh, look at that. Sean Miller Moore. I'll tell you what, it wasn't textbook, but he took his time <laughs> and he got back under control and muscled up a shot underneath. 15 to 4 GCU over Grambling State. On a 9-0 run on the Lopes. Christian. Randall. Taylor. Back out. Cobb. Top of the circle. Driving, trying to move. Oh, Jim is a door call. Timeout on the floor. 11 on the clock in the opening half. We'll be back from GCO Arena after we step aside. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. 15 to 4, GCU over Grambling State here with 11 left to go in the opening half. Let's take a look at the men's basketball preseason coaches poll. New Mexico State on top, 
kind of a recurring theme, isn't <laughs> it? New Mexico State. Big Believe it or not, day. If, you, if you're just tuning in, they're the team to beat in the Western Athletic Conference. They are good. They're solid. They're long. They're well coached. Uh, Lopes, obviously, will have their work cut out for them. They're trying to run them down in the tournament this year. But if they continue to play and listen, play hard and listen to Coach Drew, I think they're going to have a nice chance. Look at the uh, new names on there. Tarleton State out of Texas. Yep. Uh, and Dixie uh, State out of uh, Southern Utah. Yeah, I think those two teams will come into the tournament and, and, and catch some teams by surprise. They, they are uh, athletic basketball clubs, not real tall uh, or, or long, but they get after it um, with their speed. Billy Gillespie, named from the past, the head coach of Tarleton. The Trailblazers from Dixie State. Forward to see them here at GC Arena. Improving Western Athletic Conference. Looks on a little bit of a drought. Actually, yeah. Grambling State, they don't have a point in the last 17. Oh, they got oh, one there. Oh, blown assignment defensively. You always got to protect the inside. I know you want to switch out, maybe trap that ball, but fake that handoff. <laughs> Two guys went to the outside and left the basket unprotected. Sean Miller Moore moves left. Right into the 9 0 run. Tigers putting some heat on. There's another turnover. Bramley State picking it up a little bit, right? Yeah, well, defensively, they, they've been solid. I mean, Lopes haven't really helped themselves. I think they're in just that extra little adrenaline pump. They haven't had some, some, some nerves that start this game, especially with some of the subs. But there's a nice three pointers. You get a dunk inside, and you. Get the skip pass for a three-pointer on the weak side, and all of a sudden, a 15 to 4 advantage is now 15 to 9. They're right back in this basketball game. Prince Moss hits it. Oh, lost the handle. Oscar Freyer, another pickoff. Randolph. <laughs> Who got that? Somebody Sean went up Miller there. Moore. Somebody went up and got Stop that. Let's take a look at this one again, see if this is goaltending or not. But oh no, I guess it was deflected first, and then so the second one doesn't count as a. Goaltending call who went up there and followed as an Oscar Frere gets just enough of it. Miller Moore says, You shall not pass. Slaps it over there by the training staff. Short for the rebound, put back by Prince Moss. Okay, they're not doing all of a sudden now. They get some easy buckets inside. He knocked the three pointer down. Lopes getting a little sloppy here in the middle section of this first half. Rambling State, known for their top notch athletes. Whoa, and a big one there for the John Vaughn Blackshear Jr. Wow, oh, Blackshear Jr. A year ago, he wouldn't even have thought about taking that shot early in the season. Now he's knocking it down with confidence. He's got seven points going this game with a couple of assists. Now, what happened to that good GC rebounding? Now, three offensive boards here for the Tigers, keeping them clawing back into this thing. Four point disadvantage. Dixon, Labor, Freyer, far side, driving towards the baseline. Inside to Labor. Tigers are tight. Little room there for Freyer, but he put it home. Yeah! How about that two man basketball? I mean, that's just good basketball. You throw it inside to me. When your guy collapses on me, I'm going to kick it back out to you and let you tee one up from the outside. And some plays like that go, go, just goes down and assists in a three point shot, but it was really huge for the chemistry and the makeup of the ball club. Tigers back again with another jumper on the baseline. Cameron Woodall puts that one home. Five point Lopes lead. They led 15-4 at one point. Labor. Woodall playing late. Freyer tight. Finds a little seam here near side. Blackshear. Looking to draw. Foul call. Go back to this one just a moment ago. I love this here. Frere ropes it inside to his big fella. He sees he's getting double teamed, and he kicks it back out there to Frere, who drills that three-point shot. That is good team basketball. Great to see Oscar back in the hardwood for GCU. Yeah, they, they really missed his presence last year. He just like a Swiss Army knife, how much he can do defensively, blocking shots, getting steals, playing two or three different guys. He's got a big fellas down low, having a party. Look at that, 14 feet of fun down there around that basket. <laughs> well, Tigers can't do nothing with that.
See what this guy looks like from the free throw line. I like his body already. He's not a stiff at 270 pounds. He's got some good mobility. And uh, let's let's see what the form looks like. 51% free throw shooter. Yep, but I like the form. Not a little strong there. Now, that's an extra adrenaline. I don't know how to explain it if you never you know, you know, put on a, a jersey at a post high school level, but something about the first game gives you a little extra adrenaline that you don't experience in a scrimmage or practice. You gotta get that under control. Lopes 0 for 4 from the free throw line. Yeah, Fred got his hands on it. He was trying to tip that thing a couple times. Let's let his big fella come back and get it. Hold on. Traffic in front of him. Quickly to Dixon. Dixon into the paint. Kick back out. Blackshear down low. Labor looks for mid guard. Oh, look at that. The big man, Brian Thomas, for the time. Yeah, he went a little lackadaisical. I would have liked to see him go up with two hands in that painted area there and really try to power it through the bucket. 20 to 15, GCU on top of the Grambling State Tigers. We talked about some of the familiar faces for Lopes fans. One of them, Vaughn Blackshear Jr. He's stepping up and he looks like a floor general once again in game one. Yeah, JBJ, I like to call him because the kid is just plays beyond his years out there. You really can't even call him a junior. <laughs> he plays like a senior out there on the floor. Really has approved his outside shot without a doubt. You can see that confidence in his strokes. Got seven points in this game and he's going to do a nice job distributing the basketball as well. I love that one right there off the little high post game. Couple dribbles and pulls up for the for the jump shot. And then this one here after he got his shot blocked. Doesn't hang his head, goes back, gets a steal, gives it over to Mike Dixon. And he finishes it and I love that one there. Look, come over here, give me a little side screen and I'm going to take one dribble to pull up. And this is just a little catch and shoot. But off to a nice start. His numbers right now. He got seven. We talked about the seven, oh, excuse me, six points. That's right. They changed that one three from to a two. He's three for six, 50%. A couple assists and a couple rebounds. We talked about him being a stat sheet stuffer, uh, stuffer last year. Only player, the only player in Division One basketball with more than 300 points, 150 rebounds, and 100 assists. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. That's only been done like seven times in about the last gazillion years. For every three-point shot that GCU makes, Copper State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, please go to giving.gcu.edu. Very good tell. Scott Williams came on over back to GCU. It's been a little while, hasn't it? A long time. I like our little setup up here. When I first walked up, I felt like I was in the penalty box with all those plexiglass. But I like it. I like Jared's it. way down there. I don't have to worry about him elbowing me anymore. He's all elbows. You know, this is this is pretty cool. It, it, I didn't think there was going to be any atmosphere or energy in the building, but they've uh, done a great job with the pep band, the dancers, and the cheerleaders, really making this feel like a a normal GCU game. They're loud. They're always loud. They are loud. Loud and proud. Prayer. Back to Blackshear. Has to labor. Come out. Ramble tight. Wow, just throws it up at the buzzer. That's tight. The Grambling Tigers, they come out of that timeout, man. They have put their shoelaces on a little tighter, and uh, they really get after their opponent. That's a couple times now they have absolutely stifled GCU coming out of those breaks. Woodall stops. Heavy on that. Oh, yeah, he's going to push in the back yeah, right there. <laughs> Big fella. Tough when nobody's around. Because <laughs> Drew's struggling, struggling to try to get used to that face covering there. Keeps coming down up underneath his chin. Try to get him one with one of those uh, chin straps so he can keep it in one place. Imagine probably hard to, to uh, shout instructions to your players because I know sometimes when I just have to go in and order something, someone's talking to me. I like what? You know, I'm getting, I, got, I got those 52 year old ears, but half the time I can't even hear the words that they're saying. It sound like the parents on the uh, old Peanuts cartoons, you know, just mumbling. Prince Moss 
Inside the arc, short. Blackshear brings it up. Nice job by the Tigers getting back initially, but they left open a trail shot. Pinkard didn't want it. He didn't want it. Labor off the glass and in a hoop and a harm. He wants it. He wants it badly. You know, his freshman year, he'd have caught that ball. He would have shot that thing like it was a live grenade right there from 12 feet. Now he was a senior year. He realizes that all I got to do is put it down one time hard and explode to the bucket. Finishes with the concentration after the contact. He's got four points. Looking for five from the free throw line. The three-point play the old-fashioned way. Couldn't wait to say that. 257 days <laughs> since I've been saying the old-fashioned way. We didn't shoot all those threes like they do now, Bear. We had to work inside yeah. and get those buckets of hoop and the harm back in the day. Yeah. Oh, got Midgard again, pushing off again. Not a, That's a silly foul for the young, uh, young big man. You had to play on one leg, too. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the snow. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Take the uh, public transportation to the games, too. They yeah. didn't even give a team bus for it. That's terrible. Back to Woodall. Yeah, he's in there, huh? Okay, he comes back in there. Look at him battling down there. I tell you what, that's a nice little patience offensive play there. He got the ball down on that left block. Tigers aren't going easy into the night tonight. They said none of those 30, 30 point blowouts this time, GCU. Oh, Blackshear it looked pretty. Didn't drop. Quickly up the court. Christian. Foul by Frere. Yeah, they got Frere down there. He had the angle on Frere. That's a good foul. Make him earn from the free throw line. He got beat in transition. That won't make Coach Drew happy. But last thing you want to see him is come down there and get an uncontested layup or even that light foul where the guy finishes the basket. Alessandro Labor passes Chad Briscoe. Remember, the Lopes 91 through 93 for sixth. GCU career scoring with 1,314 points. Ooh. Climbing up that ladder. Who's the leader's Josh Braun, if I remember correctly, with about 1,700 points. So he got his work to do to cut to catch Braun, but nice, nice job by Labor. Right? Really has really improved each and every year in a low shooting. First career start back in 2017 was against Grambling. A bad run since that first start. Has started 90 of the 91 games since for Alessandro Labor. Right back into that 1 2 2 press, full court press, trying to get the Lopes of Cop up. We also have a three point game, Barry. Yes, we do. Two of two from the line are the Tigers. 0 for 5 from the free throw line are the Lopes. Approaching six minutes to go, opening half. Frayer. Playing down the lanes there. Labor down low. I like that slice play that they ran there. They, they should have had Labor underneath wide open with a guy pinned on his back when Frayer couldn't get him the ball. I like the way they stay patient with their offense. If it's not there, don't force it. Continue to go to your second and your third option, and it's time they drive it hard to the basket and they get pick up that foul. Both teams, with, Sorry, both teams with uh, five team fouls, so with five minutes and 53 seconds to go, probably one of these teams is going to get themselves into a, a bonus situation. Freer inbound, demons the door, leaves for Blackshear. Flavor. Freer looks for three. Short, rebound. Pulled down by Brian Thomas. Well, that's good recognition. I know our shot didn't go, but the defender went way underneath that screen, left Frere plenty of time to size up that shot. Later in the season, those will be dropping like flies. Taylor, Woodall. Heavy rebound. Dixon lets it go out. Lopes will inbound. Waver out. Sean Miller Moore comes on the court. A little smaller GCU basketball team. Now oh. both the. Oh, no. Waver's still Check out there. Yeah. <laughs> He's still out there. He was taking the ball out by the bench. We couldn't see him. Dixon. Hitting in that corner. Oh, 
Oh, a nice bucket for Blackshirt. Yeah, oh, yes. Nice one. Yeah, and a well-designed play right there. That's a beautiful design play. As Dixon's able to come off the screen. Nobody picks him up. And he had plenty of time to be able to eye that ball right from the top. And at that point, it's just a long free throw. Tight D by Blackshirt. Trying to turn on it. Unsuccessful, Peyton Taylor. Back to this one one more time here. You just get this, this high pick here. What is uh Dior sets that high, Dima sets this pick right here. And nobody there to help. And Blackshear just knocks it down. Three of eight are the lopes from the arc. Sean Miller Moore is another player to keep your eye on this year for the newcomer here for the lopes. Be able to put the ball on the floor. He should be able to help break this trap. To be able to attack the basket, play up above the rim. Three seasons at Oregon State. Stop, pop, block shot. Okay. <laughs> Javon Blacks is making a statement uh, in this first half of this game. He says, You guys might be sleeping on my shot from a year ago. I'm going to make you pay for that. 11 points, three boards, two assists, and two steals. Hold on. All in the first half. Guarding Taylor tight as well. There, back shot. Up over the top, back. Edwards drives. Frere, oh, Frere. <laughs> yeah, a little faster than anybody Frere's been going up against in practice. He just put the Jets on him and went hard to the basket. What they call Goaltending? What was the call on that? Goaltending. Okay, goaltending. I thought maybe they called him for the foul. Von Miller Moore. I'm wondering where the whistle there wasn't. Yeah, Sean Miller Moore's wow, wondering where the whistle was too. Oh, He's like, the dude, the dude knocked me down like he was a <laughs> Mack truck and I can't get a whistle. Six point GCU lead with 3.59 to go here at GCU Arena. We'll be right back. Once you've been to hell and back, there's not much left to fear. When the boogeyman goes to sleep at night, he checks under his bed for me. Have you ever wondered who Waldo's hiding from? Me. Not even the Cougars of L.A. are enough to scare me. But if I get into an accident, I'm calling the boss. Sweet James. If you've been hurt, don't back down. Call Sweet James. The temperature scanning kiosk from Pacific Office Automation is an easy-to-use, attendant-free device that quickly checks a person's temperature anytime, anywhere. You can now provide peace of mind at schools and universities, grocery stores, restaurants, nursing homes, medical clinics, sporting events, offices, private gatherings, and more. Look to us to help you reduce the risk and be safe. Visit PacificOffice.com. Pacific Office Automation. Problem solved. Inside GCU Arena Lopes right now with a six-point lead over Grambling State. Just under four to go in the first half as Coach Drew makes his coaching debut with the Lopes. And then on Friday, Coach Molly Miller will take the court for the first time with the Lopes as well. Looking forward to her debut. He will be carrying some of the women's games throughout the 2020-2021 season here on Fox 10 Extra. You see a question mark for Saturday. All the protocols are in place for the Lopes men's basketball team to take the court however safety first so we will see what matches up for the opponent get used to the question mark because the only thing we can count on during these crazy times of COVID-19 is change and everything changing by the minute right guys meanwhile on Tuesday the men's basketball team also in action against Mississippi Valley State will be there for all these home games as the looks have eight non-conference home games scheduled here throughout November and December. Coach Drew, he's excited, guys, to be out there with his team. We've mentioned several times they're not going up against guys in the purple uniform. They get to go see how their uh, game plan plays out against their opponent, finally. They got to enjoy that. Hey, and I got a free throw, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just sometimes that's nerves, sometimes it's adrenaline. You know, that's going to happen. They're going to they're be a good free throw shooting team. It's all said and done. A nice looking stroke. I commented on his stroke early. He went up there and he bricked two. He comes back and makes the next two. Got to like that. Shot clock didn't start. <laughs> Everybody's a little rusty from such a long layoff. 
will reset and bound at midcourt. Taylor, near side. I by Blackshear. Back out. Edwards. Edwards. Back out to Taylor. Near side. Moving the ball around. Woodall for three. Off the mark. Big rebound up high. The door pushed it out. Pulled down there by Kelton Edwards. Near side. Taylor. Right by Jaden Stone. Got some help. That doesn't go. Rebound pulled down again by the Tigers. Edwards puts it home. Uh, second opportunity to kill you. Drive a coach mad over there on that sideline. Sean Miller more and wanted it badly, but Brian Thomas said no. Nope. Yeah, Brian Thomas gets all ball, but Miller Moore, he does the right thing. You've got to attack shot blockers. You can't shy away from shot blockers. All you young players out there. Doesn't matter if somebody swats your shot. You go in there and you get that body contact like Miller Moore does right here. Look at all that body contact underneath. You go to the line and shoot your two free throws. You try to shy away and pump fake and fade away. <laughs> You're just giving those shot blockers opportunities to measure and close that distance and knock your ball into the third row. Flavor out. Remember Miller Moore a couple plays before he, he went in there, got knocked down, and he didn't get the whistle. He didn't shy away from contact the second time. That's the kind of things you like to see. 200 pounder, not afraid to throw his body around. Gabe McLaughlin back in the game, and Liam Lowy steps on the court. The freshman saying a breath. His father Tommy, his associate head coach at Gonzaga University. So glad you could join us tonight for this debut for GCU and head coach Bryce Drew. Foul by Zidore. Yeah, a little confusion on that weak side. I think they thought they were supposed to switch and uh, could not recover in time. Had to commit that foul or risk giving up the easy basket. One of the things we talked about is no blown assignments defensively. That's hard to do in the first half of your first game. Uh, but communication's important. Got to talk out there defensively and use your hand signals. Let guys know where they're supposed to be on the floor. That will improve um, in the first half of this season. Yeah, it'd be nice if the Lopes were up 15 right now, but this kind of game might even be better for them. Uh, an eight-point basketball might even be better for them going in the locker room at halftime. Coach Miller knows he's going to have the attention of his players rather than them being up, you know, double figures, 15 points. Aaron on the second free throw. Miller Moore, Blackshear, quickly. Leo Lloyd. Blackshear. Zidore comes out, looks for three. That was heavy. Rebound. Pushed out. Knocked out by the Tigers. Yeah, Gabe was down there on that offensive glass. He tried to go for the tip jam, and then one of the Tigers was like, oh, no, you don't. He knocked it out of, all over there by their Tigers bench. But nice job that time executing the offense against that zone. I'm sure they probably haven't faced a zone as uh, that extends and is as quick as this uh, Tiger zone defense is. So talking to Coach Drew before the game, he knew they were going to play a lot of different looks, and especially a zone look, and sometimes it's hard to prepare in practice to face a team that does it so well even with your backup player so they're getting a little bit of everything here in this first half from this ties group 10 gcu players have been on the court he wanted to get to 10 he told me he'd like to try to get 10 guys out there in this first half he did it they're two and a half to go inside game mclaughlin <laughs> nice little pick and roll. Javon Blackshirt hung with it a little bit longer to Gabe to get his head turned around and pick that ball up. And he doesn't put the ball on the floor when he got in that painted area. He went strong up with it. Mm, blocked down there on that baseline. It's going to send the Tigers to the line for the one and one. 
Liam Lloyd called. Eight of the ten have scored for GCU. That puts the World Serpentine foul limit. Cameron the lead is dead at the line. Cameron Christian, Allen, Texas, the redshirt junior guard by way of Boise State. I like those shoes he's got on, too. He's got some red shoes on. Red and lots of white stripes. Adidas. I'm going to say, Coach Drew, I don't think has sat down the whole game. And then he up, he just went down, sat down for like two seconds, <laughs> back up again. <laughs> Got ants in his pants. Liam Lloyd, sworn. Kick back out. Driving. Underneath. Oh! Wow. Nice drive. Was that Miller again down there? Feeding game. Yeah, and then, and then with, keeping his head up when the defender came to him, he fires a strike over to his buddy. Look at He all of a sudden he keeps his heads up. Comes over, fires a strike, and Gabe goes up with two hands hard, gets that foul, and still almost muscled the ball in the basket. Christian called for the foul. Lopes had made four free throws in a row until that, that miss, but I'd like to see him take his time a little bit more with that ball. He gets into that shooting rhythm really quick after he receives the basketball. Let's see if he takes a little bit more time with the second one. He last played with Southwest Missouri State on March 2nd, 2019 versus Belmont. Dave. Some of the kids have some family here tonight, right? Weren't some family members allowed to uh, yeah. come down and watch this game here? Yeah. Part of the 250? Yeah, 250 uh, students and family members. Hold yes. down by McLaughlin. And that's an arena that seats 7,800. <laughs> so it's definitely social distance happening out there. Yeah, no doubt. Lloyd for three. Heavy. Pulled down by the Tigers. Travell Cunningham brings it up. Far side. Hide by Lloyd. Crosses over. Near side. Looks for three. Tiger. Archie shot off the mark. It's Moss off the mark. Driving. Heavy traffic. Ball's bouncing around. Travel. Yeah. And, you know, they didn't get the first initial rebound, but Lloyd does a good job sliding his feet. Forcing his guy away from the middle down towards that baseline where the big guy was able to come over and disrupt the whole action down there, caused the turnover. So nice job after not getting that ball. They stayed with it and still get the defensive stop on the turnover. Tigers with seven, the Lopes with six turnovers. Kind of expect that in the opening game, right? Absolutely. I'd be surprised if they didn't have each team didn't have 15 to 18 turnovers in this game. Rebound on the miss, picked up by the Tigers. Cunningham. Look to feed down low, doesn't go. Oh, that's one he wants back. He had it right there. He got that basketball, came down, went back up strong with it, and just couldn't get it to drop. Lopes going to try to play for the last shot of the half. Bradley coaching staff on their feet. Donnie Jackson. 14, 10 on the shot clock. Eight, seven, six, five. Lakshir throws up the three. Not there. Rebound. Nobody there. Long attempt by the Tigers off the mark. 34 23, the halftime score. GCU on top. They were up 15 4 at one point. As the uh, Tigers storm back to narrow the margin, they've opened it back up to 11 for GCU. Yeah, it's a good, some good and some bad in that first half. I think Coach Drew will be happy with his performance. Let's send it down to Kate Longworth with the head coach. All right, thank you guys. Uh, coach Drew, first and foremost, how did it feel to just be on the court in real live game action? Yeah, it's great to be out there. You know, this team, all the teams in college basketball have waited a long time to be out here. So it's almost surreal looking out here, seeing all the cutouts and, and actually that we have a game. Um, to see how the last eight months have gone, but uh, happy with our guys. Thought we came out with some energy to start the game. 
lots of energy and uh, Blackshear going out there leading all scores right now with 11 points to his name. What have you seen from his first half action? You know, he was really aggressive. I thought our guys uh, set some good screens for him, got him in some good positions, and uh, credit him for making shots. All right, thank you so much, Coach Drew. We'll see more action in the second Thanks. half. We appreciate your time. Coach Drew going to join his team right now. Meanwhile, we will be back here with you in just a few moments with more. We can stand together by standing far apart. Stay six feet apart from other people. Wear your mask when you go out. Wash your hands often. If you feel sick, stay home. Be respectful of others. The choices you make are critical. By protecting yourself, it helps protect all of us. Your actions can save lives. What we do now will shape our future. Stay, stay safe. safe. How can you describe Whataburger's Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich? The chicken just has a certain, um, you know, with the sauce. The sauce, it gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... Whew, it's almost too hard to put into words. Good thing there's... Yeah. Good thing there's the Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich at Whataburger. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Longworth, welcome you back here to GCU Arena, where the Lopes have an 11 point lead over Grambling State here at the half. And I'm welcoming you to the Lopes halftime show, coming at you in partnership with Sneaky Big right here on Fox 10 Extra. Well, we have mentioned things look a little different here inside GCU Arena, but no doubt the love for the game still on display for this men's basketball team as Coach Bryce Drew makes his coaching debut. And in just a couple short days on Friday, the women's basketball team, fingers crossed, Ross will also take the court during these crazy COVID-19 times with a new head coach at the realm as well. We take a look at what Molly Miller brings to this folks program. Ready? Compete! Compete! You've got to have a motor to play in the system. Oh, oh. There you go, guys! Go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You want to play fast? This is how we're going to play fast. Camp Grit might not be my favorite camp day. Okay? It's probably Camp Lockdown. Quick, 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 active, jump, jump. We are going to cut down nets because we're going to be great defenders. Stunt with your left, trace with your right. Show me a bucket right here. Atta, baby. Now, sometimes you have to mic a coach or a manager up for hours or days to get video like that. But with Coach Miller, not so. She brings that fiery passion courtside, and it rubs off on her team. She said to me earlier today that she just wants to show off the energy. She believes it can be contagious, and she hopes that will be on display Friday night in the Lopes debut game for this 2020-21 season against Weaver State. And as the season plays on, we'll be bringing you some women's action right here on Fox 10 Extra. And as I mentioned, I did have a chance to talk with Coach Miller earlier tonight, and she just said that she's very excited to be making the jump from Division II to Division I basketball, and uh, her records perhaps speak for themselves. The past two years as uh, the reigning Division II Coach of the Year back-to-back -back season, she had a 67-1 and record. Absolutely impressive, and I think what's best, as President Mueller explained to me today, she just brings that cares the charisma that he wants to see and also preaches the character he wants to see in players and coaches here where they do things not only on the court or on the field but also away in the classroom and in the community which is exactly what coach Andy Stankwitz baseball team did last Saturday at a local Safeway as they teamed up with St. Mary's Food Bank who's been challenged this year more than ever due to COVID-19. 
and uh, Coach Andy Stinkwitz's team just trying to help make sure that Arizona families in need have food on their tables. And of course, uh, with Thanksgiving tomorrow, GCU doing all it can to give back to the community, not only during these hard times with the pandemic, but also as we approach the holiday season. And I've said it before, we uh, are talking safety here, but we're also hoping you're still hungry on this eve of Thanksgiving because we have more college basketball news. Barry and Scott will be serving it up to you right after this. We'll take a quick break and be back at you right here on Fox 10 Extra. Once you've been to hell and back, there's not much left to fear. When the boogeyman goes to sleep at night, he checks under his bed for me. Have you ever wondered who Waldo's hiding from? Me. Not even the cougars of LA are enough to scare me. But if I get into an accident, I'm calling the boss. Sweet James. If you've been hurt, don't back down. Call Sweet James. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes. Back at GCU Arena where it's 34-23 GCU over Grambling State. Barry Butel alongside Scott Williams. Well, opening half, we saw a little bit of uh, things that we liked. The rebounding, wow, that was on show early. Got a little messy first game. Got to expect them to be a little bit sloppy. Yeah, a little sloppy in that first half, but really did some good things. You can see this GCU team has got a lot of size and muscle. Um, and that's going to be <laughs> mean good things for them as the course of the season goes on. Javon Blackshear did a nice job running the ball club out there. Got some guys come off the bench that were a little bit nervous. Got a little sloppy there in that mid part of that first half. But then they kind of ride the ship and got back under control, made some shots. And uh, Coach Drew nailed it. You know, they're setting some big time screens out there, freeing up their shooters. Let's take a look at our first half highlights brought to you by Arizona Leadership Foundation. Well, I, I like this one right here. He, he saw the guy was wounded. <laughs> he went over there and <laughs> attacked him and stole the ball after he'd gotten in swat again. I'll hit him. Mikey Dixon lays it in. And on, this is a good one right here. Just off of that high pick, knocked down the tray ball from the top of the key. He was one three-point field goal in that shot. Had himself 11 points on five of 10 shoes. And then the big fella down low, Alessandro Labor, does a nice job. Oh, there's one more from Black I'm sorry. Knocking down that jump shot as well. And then... Go look at um, Laver. He does a nice job getting that ball down there on that paint and scoring area and using his size and his length and his experience and getting on the offensive glass and putting this one in. I love this one right here, but he would have shot that shot there from a uh, little corner jump shot three years ago, and now he has the experience to power that ball to the basket. See, those 41% shooting, but look at the defense, Barry. That's what I'm talking about, holding the Grambling State Tigers to just 32% and only one made three-point shot. First half stats brought to you by Commonwealth Insurance. The way insurance should be as you take a look at the points in the paint. Fast break points in favor of GCO as well. This was a game that got cut to three at 22-19 before the Lopes opened it up late there by 11 points. Eight of the 10 on the floor for GCU have put points on the board. Yeah, they got themselves back under control. That extra adrenaline pump, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. I think that uh, they, they managed that after the uh, initial Juice of, and then, and then they can, they settled themselves down and did a nice job. That six turnovers in that first half, so not actually not a bad number as far as the turnovers go either. All right, Kate Longworth will be back with more of our halftime festivities here from GCU Arena and the debut performance for head coach Bryce Drew. We'll be right back after we take this timeout.
Sanderson Ford strongly supports law enforcement. We're honoring military, first responders, and medical professionals with a Blue Friday sale event. On top of huge incentives from Ford and Sanderson Ford Blue Friday sale discounts, we're doubling Ford's bonus cash for those who serve. Save over $8,000 on over 100 F-150 Super Crew trucks in stock at Sanderson Ford. To all those who serve, we salute you. Thank you for your service. As a kid, I always dreamed of being a Division I athlete. GCU supported that dream, and they also allowed me to get an education. So when I came to GCU, I was able to transfer enough credits in to fast track my education. So I graduated in three years with a master's, and I did it debt free because I had athletic and academic scholarships. I'm Mackenzie, and I earned my MBA from Grand Canyon University. There's the thunder in all of us. Come find your partner. Welcome back. The Lopes basketball underway here in Coach Bryce Drew's debut with GCU. Right now, the Lopes with an 11-point lead over Grambling State. And leading the way for the scores for Grambling State, Edwards with six points, Moss with five points. They also have three players with four points to their name. Meanwhile, on the Lopes side, Mikey Dixon with five, a couple players with four, Labor and Miller Moore. And leading the way for all scorers is Javon Blackshear Jr. Coach Drew telling me he's just really stepped up his aggression so far in this game. He likes what he sees from the young player. And uh, we were expecting big things from him last year. He carried through. It's exciting to see what he'll be able to do this year. And we'll be with you all year long here on Fox 10 Extra, bringing you Lopes basketball. We're just about to get the second half underway as we head to break here and uh, safety first on the mind we know that the six man is important here in gcu arena but right now 250 fans in the stands today a lot of cutouts and of course everyone's in a mask all right mask up and looks up we'll be right back When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. Package GCU Arena 34 23. The Lopes over the Tigers from Grambling State. You mentioned how Javon Blackshear Jr. leading with 11 points, but how about Mikey Dixon as well? He's got five points with help from Javon Blackshear Jr. as well. Yeah, Mikey Dixon, I mean, this is a guy that came on in the second half of last year. He started really getting played with some confidence. I love this one right here. Just uses his wheels, beats everybody down to the bucket, and then it, that was just after a, a good. Uh, rebound by Oscar Frere. They push it ahead. Javon Blackshear's got his eyes up, finds Mikey Dixon in the spot down there on that right wing and knocks it down. So nice job. And they're going to be a nice little duo, that, that Dixon-Blackshear backcourt. 
played 11 minutes. Von Blackshear, he went 19 minutes in that first half. Not nothing unusual for him. He played averaging about 35, just under 35 a year ago. So we'll have like to see what kind of adjustments are made here at halftime. How well his team can respond to that little uh, full court trap. They turned it over a couple times in that first half. Want to make sure they take care of that basketball in the second half. And continue to attack that that zone defense inside. I think they did a nice job punching that ball down low. Labor back out on the floor. You were talking about Mike Dixon, the uh, transfer from St. John's, 11.8 points per game a season ago. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I, I actually, they said that um, uh, Os uh, excuse me, Alessandro put on some muscle, but I, I think he's actually slimmed down a little bit. He, he looks Especially a little bit more like Matt Jackson uh, oh. kind of a build than he did. You know, he came in as a freshman because he was big, but he was puffy. Yeah, now he looks like he's really got his, his uh, BMI at a level that he really likes. It. Not like me. Always nice to have Matt Jackson reference. Yeah. He's on cut out in the stands. Oh, oh how do we get a cut out? I got Jackson, uh, Jackson. I saw uh, Josh Braun. You know, we, we, you, me, you, and Kate, we gotta, you know, start making some noise and see if we can get ourselves a cut out by the end of the season. Mm -hmm. There's Josh. Josh, that's that, that, that. Who's that on the left? And was that um, Ryan Marley? Who was that? No, I don't, I don't, are there Shellis and Josh. Uh, that looks like, is that Paul Panichu? Oh, baseball player. Yeah. Okay. Is that uh, Paul? Well, we're going to work on that. I don't know who I need to talk to, but I'm going to start writing some, some emails. Wow. Who knew there'd be so much drama around uh, the cutouts? Yeah. I, the cutouts are big, like bobbleheads, man. I never had a bobblehead. I never had a cutout. I want something. Something. All right, let's see what these Tigers got coming in for these lopes here in the second half offensively. Cunningham looks to drive. Had to pull it back. Pivots away from the screen there. Randolph. I'll tell you what, Tigers worked hard for that bucket right there. They got the ball from side to side a couple times, which always softens up the defense. And they get a little eight foot push shot right in front of the bucket. Prayer near side. They're back in that zone defense. A little matchup zone defense. All alone, Freyer. A little flat. Picked up by Cameron Christian. Back out, stepping back, Cunningham. Yeah, a little mismatch there with the big fella attacks his feet. Oh, did you see that nice feed? Oh, that was nice. Yeah, they got a mismatch out there. The big guy out there, ISO, 25 feet from the basket. He didn't want no part of that. He should have backed off rather than let the guy drive past him. There you go ahead. You knock down the outside shot. I'll just punch on your backside. When you give up that uh, drive, then you, a lot of guys have to collapse the ball. He, a nice dish, found his teammate. Tigers coming out on fire. For the end of that mid-guard attempt, did Thomas. Short on the long distance shot, kicked back in. Here come the Tigers. Near side, stopping there is Christian. Back to Cunningham. Looks for some help from Thomas. Kicked back out, loss. Stops, pops, in and out. Midgard ends up with it. Midgard's done a nice job on the boards. What did I give him now? Looks like he's got himself five rebounds in this game. Make it six. Stat guy's a little slow. That'd be good. He, he can go out there and get himself ten boards every night. <laughs> that would be lovely for GC. A nice little up and under, step through. And that one go in a couple games from now. That's a nice play down there. Forcing that ball. They're attacking inside. Got one mid guard, got it blocked. This time they go back inside to Labor, and he's a little bit more successful drawing that foul. Randolph called. Labor at the line. 0 for 1 in the game. Nerves coming down now. 7 for 14, got it up to 50% from the line. Hey, it's just you team, like I said earlier. I, I have no worries about them being a poor free throw shooter the team. I think they're going to shoot uh, well as, as a team on, on the course of the season. They, guys that are going to log those heavy minutes all have nice strokes. Alessandro, 79% a season ago. Cunningham. 
Leaves it there for Christian. Oh, Midgard thought he had himself got an easy block, and then Christian kind of moved the ball from the right to the left, right around the big fella, and got it in. Freyer looks inside, labor quickly. Dixon. Down low, Midgard. Oh, Thomas put an end to that. Well, Thomas comes over and tries to battle the big guy, but it's a little too little too late because he already had himself gathered and was going up with strength. You remember in the first half, Barry, he tried to go up with one hand and got swatted away. <laughs> quick learner, quick study, goes back up the second time here in the second half, puts both of those big arms on that basketball and hands on that ball and tries to power through. And then anytime you go strong to the bucket like that, if there's some contact, officials are going to give you the benefit of the whistle. Guard connects on the front end. Now one of three from the line tonight. Helsingor Denmark. You ever been there? Oh, no, I bet it's beautiful. I've never been. I've never been in that 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 uh, town or Denmark for that for that matter. But I'd like to go over there. There's a lot of those countries I had Denmark, Sweden. I'd like to see those. Yeah, a lot of Minnesotans where I'm from are there from Denmark. Oh, is that right? Yeah, don't you know? Look at that poke away by Javon Blackshear. Oh, <laughs> no, oh right back down there by was Randolph. That Thomas? Oh, was Randolph yeah. got that one? Oh my goodness! They are a long, athletic bunch. These Tigers. They will swat some shots. You come in there half stepping, they'll send it in, <laughs> up into those cutouts. How about Grambling State, right? Super Bowl 22 MVP Doug Williams, NBA Hall of Famer Willis Reed, one of the uh, top 50 greatest ever. <laughs> put some put some players in some good positions. Uh, Doug, Doug Williams, Eddie Robinson, the legendary head coach, Buck Buchanan, the KC Chiefs, great uh, athletes from Grambling State. Get that extra effort. They didn't reward Oscar Fair, but the more you go, the more you get. Next time, that might, might not be a bucket. Might be a bucket. Oh, wow. Over Prince Moss Prince. by Midgard. Yeah, he was right up over the seven footer and laid that in. Hey, we got ourselves an eight point game. It's, Tigers are not going away. Waver down to Midgard. Swarm three Tigers. Ha! It's right the needle. He's just getting brought up over there. Well, that's what I'm talking about. This guy's not a stiff. I mean, he's on one side of the basket. He's able to get himself all the way to the other side, uses the rim to protect his shot. I mean, probably didn't have to in that particular situation, but that was a pretty athletic move for a 270 pounder. Six points, six boards for Midgard. Randolph, down low. Slammed it up against the glass. Yeah, well, he, you know, he's facing a lot of pressure down there by Midgard. Midgard grabs another rebound, but he's just down there. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Just just a big roadblock down there, seven feet. Look at this one one more time here. I love that one because he fights himself through that double team and then comes back down here and gets a piece of that shot. Pope's lead is 10. We'll be right back. Anderson Ford strongly supports law enforcement. We're honoring military, first responders, and medical professionals with a Blue Friday sale event. On top of huge incentives from Ford and Sanderson Ford Blue Friday sale discounts, we're doubling Ford's bonus cash for those who serve. Save over $8,000 on over 100 F-150 Super Crew trucks in stock at Sanderson Ford. To all those who serve, we salute you. Thank you for your service. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. GCU basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By Herf Jones, by your side. By Community Tire Pros, serving Arizona since 1945. And by Talking Stick Resort, play in style.
Back at GC Arena in Phoenix, Arizona, where the Lopes are up by 10 over the Tigers from Grambling State. And this the season opener for GCU basketball. So glad you could join us, Shrek. <laughs> Shrek down there by Chuck. You can't tell who's who if you, wow. if you paint Guys, Chuck green. <laughs> yeah, why, why is he smacking yeah. Barkley all beside his head? Time to take a look at our sweet play of the half. Brought to you by Sweet James. How about the, this defensive play down low? Yeah, I, I like that right there. We were just singing his praises here uh, during the commercial break and how he's, you know, this kid can actually really move at 270 pounds. He's, he's mobile, he changes shots, he blocks shots, he rebounds the ball, he runs the floor, he sets a good pick, rolls out of that pick nicely. I, I see why Coach Drew's so happy on him. I mean, he plays like a senior. He, uh, I'm, I'm impressed. Lopes improving that free throw percentage. They started 0 for 4. They are 10 of 13 since that mark. Field goals here in the second half. Lopes just 1 of 5. Well, the Tigers came out 4 of 7 so far. Step back. A little heavy. Midgard with another rebound. Mm, just collecting those things. Blackshire with a nice spinorama. Freyer. Drive off the glass too much. Look at Midgard again. What's that? Nice for this kid. I'll tell you what, he's chewing glass down there. That's a nice jump. Uh, Oscar Furr's got to go ahead and pull up for that jump shot when he catches that swing pass. Jaden Stone downtown. Not there. The door tried to poke it away. Here come the Tigers. Nice spin move by Moss. Moss takes it. Oh, he wanted it. I'll tell you what, Moss, he had a little anger and angry intentions behind that drive to the basket. Got this steal. He keeps it, does a nice job shielding off Blackshear, not letting him get in front, and then just really attacks that basket, gets that contact. Sidoro called for the foul. 78% free throw shooter a season to go for Prince Moss. Bessemer, Alabama. On Miller Moore in for Freyer. Whenever I say the word Alabama, you know I slip into that Keith Jackson, Alabama. You know? <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> what a great call he has. Oh. There's this now. This is this what I wanted to see. What, what adjustments the Lopes made at halftime to handle this full court. Pressing defense right here. There we go. Bust through it. Up to Blackshirt. Yeah, anytime you got Blackshirt, that always helps. Boy, I think he, did he want to get that to Sean Miller Moore? Yeah, I think I think miss. I think he was. I think Miller Moore closed a little more distance than uh, Blackshirt thought he was going to be out there on the 12 to 15 foot range. Blackshirt, short rebound. Sean Miller Moore got on it. Yeah, Blackshirt's you know got cold here in the second half. He was five for ten in that first half. Hasn't had a bucket yet. That was a nice little spinning move in there, not able to get it to go with the offhand. Moore took a chop to the left side of his face there. Kristen. Short. I wonder if fatigue is maybe setting in on some of these shooters. Yeah, wonder, uh, free right? throws are not looking, we're looking a little, uh, little flat. And last couple shots by Blackshear is flat. That shot there, and Tigers was, you know, front, front of the rim and down. You got all that emotion. Sometimes you burn some energy on, on that emotion in the first half and don't have a whole lot here for the second half. He'll be they'll be rotating some players in and out of there. I think guys will be giving the little tired signal telling the coach, hey, I need a breather. McLaughlin in for the Lopes. Midgard takes a seat. Ten offensive boards for the Lopes. Only six second chance points, though. Jaden Stone. McLaughlin. Blackshire in the corner. Moore. Back to Blackshire. Looks for some help from McLaughlin. Feeds Dima Zador. Underhand. Beauty. That's one heck of a drive right there. That's big time stuff right there. You get that ball 20 feet off that left wing and you're able to slice through a little crease right into the front of the rim. Cunningham. Pulls back out. Moves near side. Lecture. Oh, he almost picked his pocket. Kristen. Keeps it off. Rebound. All white jersey. Yeah, Gabe really went up there and claimed that basketball. He had a nice little help defense, too. He hedged good 
on Blackshear's man. Then he fights back to the basket, gets that ball coming off the rim. Look at this dunk. Oh, quick ball movement. McLaughlin is just stymied. Oh, my goodness. That was that Cobb down there. I thought for sure Gabe was going to get himself a, an easy flush. But you say those Tigers, they really close to the basketball and play above the rim. It's one, one more time here. It's his door that gets a nice pass there from Blackshear and drives it right to the hole. And look at this pass right here. It's a beautiful dish, just drops it down to the bucking. Unselfishly tries to get his teammate an easy bucket inside. Eleven point lead for GCU. Lecture. What do you think is the door? I, 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 I like him. Okay, good. I, I, I hope I'm seeing the same. I'm seeing the same thing you are. Look at oh this. my! Nothing wrong with his knee on that play oh, right there. Oh, my oh. goodness. That was Oscar Freire ish right there. He sent that down with authority. Touch needs a timeout out of games. Lee has grown to 13. He said, whoa, wait a second. Five points, five boards. For Take game. a look at this one more time. Just times it perfectly. <laughs> Had a guy up underneath his left uh, uh, armpit. Just slams it down with the hard right hand. Almost took the rim, the rim home as a souvenir. Look at this thing. Just collapses that rim down and some authority. He loves it. Seeing Almost. some things, some things coming together here, even in the opener. Depth is there, the size is there. Let's take a quick look around the Western Athletic Conference. Jabari Rice picked as the preseason player of the year by the coaches. New Mexico State Aggies relocated here to Phoenix due to COVID-19. They're uh, right down the uh, road, and uh, they've got a game against Arizona Christian. I believe they're at Arizona Grand. I don't know oh, if we the wanted Grand. to push that information out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Dixie State, Tarleton State joining the WAC. Going to be great to see both of those schools represented here in the Western Athletic Conference. That's pretty cool. I I'm going to go ahead and check out some of their basketball games. I really like the style in which they play. They play hard. And Yep. Talk about how long they are and very well coached and yep. execute real well. And me trying to get into coaching, I want to start seeing not only, you know, what this uh, coaching staff here, what, what uh, the, uh, Bryce Drew is going to do, but also going to check out what the New Mexico State does because I think they do a real good job coaching up their guys. They do, yeah. I mean, the record indicates it, and the success of the program is undeniable. Definitely a rising tide is uh, one in which you hope that it raises all the ships, right? The the uh, competitive advantage, you, you hope that that every team in the Western Athletic Conference strives for excellence. Yeah, uh, without without a doubt. I think the newcomers coming in, you talked about the Gillespie, uh, Gillespie coming uh, yep. to the conference as well. Um, uh, he sure they have his teams ready to perform when they step between the lines. Eight loaves with four plus points in the game for GCU. Those, those shoes I liked. I yeah, gotta get a pair of like those. Those. Right, those are sweet. Don't tell Jordan. Bryce <laughs> Drew, Scott Williams, and Michael Jordan, all former Chicago Bulls. That's right. <laughs> Good drive there. Doesn't go for the Tigers. Jaden Stone brings it up for TCU. Often. Quick one there by Woodall almost picked it off. Stone. Sean Miller Moore. Dima Zador. Blackshear. 13 on the shot clock. Drives. Got a little bit of open rope. Oh! Not there underneath though. And foul. Dima Zador. I like that though. See, see, Zador comes over like he's gonna set a screen. And then he slips to the basket. Blackshear later in the year will hit him on that play. This time he tried to use his wheels and just take it hard to the basket. Lopes a plus 10 on that glass, and that's what you want to see because a year ago they used to get beat up on the glass in too many basketball games. So it's gonna put a smile on that coaching staff's face to see, you know, with 11.55 to play, his team's got a 10-point rebound advantage. In the far corner, trying to inch his way in there as Edwards turnaround. Not going to happen. One and done. They did not yeah, get right. any of those offensive rebounds they had in the middle section of that first half. I think they cracked that whip at halftime and said, no more second chance opportunities for the guys in the yellow shirts. Thomas did pull down that rebound. Taylor 
in for the Tigers. Yeah, that was a nice move there. Uh, Taylor does a nice job getting his first bucket. He got himself down below that um, free throw line. When the ball gets below the free throw line, and you're playing defense. You're in a disadvantage in a big way. Stone. Blockshire. Demon Zador. Hands it back to Blackshear. Drives. Got a little bit of room off the glass. Right, Did travel. travel. Yeah, just Kinda could hesitated. not stop and slid his pivot foot. Timeout on the floor with 11.06 to go. How about Gabe McLaughlin? Send it home, big man. Once you've been to hell and back, there's not much left to fear. When the boogeyman goes to sleep at night, he checks under his bed for me. Have you ever wondered who Waldo's hiding from? Me. Not even the cougars of L.A. are enough to scare me. But if I get into an accident, I'm calling the boss. Sweet James. If you've been hurt, don't back down. Call Sweet James. We made USAA insurance for members like Kate. A former Army medic made of the flexibility to handle whatever Monday has in store and tackle four things at once. So when her car got hit, she didn't worry. She simply filed a claim on her USAA app and said, I've got this. USAA insurance is made the way Kate needs it. Easy. She can even pick her payment plan, so it's easy on her budget and her life. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. Debut of the new head coach of GCU basketball, Bryce Drew, the 14th in school history, the 13th in school history. We'd be remiss not to talk about Dan Marley. Seven seasons at the helm, leading this team into the D1 era, and they came out flying, gangbusters. They really did. I mean, they they they, they made a name for themselves at the D1 basketball. The Havocs, this arena here. The competition that they played at Duke, played Louisville, Kentucky, Indiana, won 27 games, took his team to two WAC champion, uh, conference championship games against New Mexico State, um, put some players in the pros. Uh, you, you've got to like everything in the foundation and what he established here for Grand Canyon basketball going forward. Now passes the baton on to a, a, a son of a coach in, in Bryce Drew who's going to do even bigger things with it. Yeah, solid foundation has been established for Coach Drew and his coaching staff, one in which is much heralded with uh, the likes of Jamal Walker, who was here a season ago as, assistant, as an assistant to Brad Underwood at Illinois. Ed Schilling, who has associations with Coach Calipari, who was also on his staff there at Indiana, not with him at Indiana, but on his staff with the New Jersey Nets in the NBA as well. And at Casey Shaw, a big man, former uh, professional player in Europe as well as a uh, fellow first round selection or, of, uh, of the NBA along with Bryce Drew. Yeah, no, you got a solid, solid squad, no doubt about it. President Mueller was singing their, singing their praises and he got a call, he said, from Cal, Coach Cal. Yeah. At, uh, you know, that you got yourself a, a top five uh, program. Um, Power five program, rather, a coaching staff, and that's always important. You want to coach these guys up. These guys want to go play at the next level. There's a nice drive in there, going hard to the hole. And Woodall using that left hand off the glass. Now, again, one GC can't seem to keep that double figure lead. Right, right. Freyer back to Labor. Mikey Dixon on the near side. Hide by Taylor inside. Mid guard. Threads the needle. Freyer quickly. Jaden Stone puts it down. Top of the key. Good. That's great no. execution. Inside out basketball. Boy, that makes my heart sing to watch that. I love when guys play that inside outside basketball play together. Nothing wrong with getting a 16 foot jump shot right in front of the basket with your board covered. Ninth look to score for Jaden Stone. Ten minutes to go. Turnaround. Not going to happen. Midgard pulls down another rebound. Goodness, this guy does like to chew the glass. Midgard doing a good job. They don't have him up here, so I don't know how many boards he's got, but he's got to be approaching double figures and rebounds. Back out, Stone. Too much room for three. Not going to happen. Rayer tried to fly in. Pulled down by the Tigers. Robert Johnson on the floor. There for Taylor. Taylor moves the ball around now to Woodall. Woodall. Pick 
back over to Brian Thomas. Finds Taylor. He'll back up. Move to his right. Hide by Dixon. Freyer over there in the corner guarding. A shot by the Tigers off the mark. Yeah, another short one. Those long shots now as the guys' legs are starting to get tired are always hitting the front of the rim. That's no what bucket. You, yeah, that's what you do. You start getting tired. You don't settle for outside shots. You put the ball on the floor one time for a pull up, and the next time you take it, you take it all the way to the to the bucket. Fourteen foul. Labor and Mitgard on the floor. Yeah, this is something the Lopes teams used to do really good. These baseline out of bounds plays, their execution was most excellent. Let's see if they can come up with a bucket here. Labor, top of the arc, down low. Near side, Blackshirt, he'll drive, stop, twist, turn, ooh. Try to kick it back to Midgard, but he was moving in. And look all that clean by Randolph. He draws a foul, Laver smiling. Yeah, he, he tried to get back there and do the old hockey, uh, excuse me, the soccer player oh, move oh, up there. Uh, he, he flopped, trying to get that, that charge, and ends up tripping the Tigers. and. I'm gonna go to the line for a couple free th free throws, but you know that offensive execution that last time down was a little bit lacking, and led to this easy run out here. And, uh, the foul on the big fella. Off the mark. Darian Randolph from Dallas, Texas. Team in rebounding last season. Bouncing all around, didn't go. What do we got? Lane violation. Lane violation. Yeah, somebody got in there a little too early. Got caught creeping too soon. The extra, sh extra shot here. <laughs> it's like, you get three shots, you got to make one, right? I saw what you're doing there. I see what you're doing there. The old commentator yeah, jinx. Yeah. No, I wouldn't do that. It's too early in the season to be that mean. Oh, wow. It worked anyway. Wow. <laughs> Jaden Stone's back over quickly to the scorer's table. He's good ready to check back in. Mikey Dixon! Oh, what a great pass. I'm not sure if that was Frey or DeLon Blackshear Jr. with that cross-court skip pass, but on time and on target. Finds Mikey Dixon for his second three of the game. Eight points for Mikey. Taylor. And move around Blackshear. Christian. It's Freyer. Oh, I do not know about that. It looks to me like Freyer does a great shot presenting his chest. Look at that one more time by Freyer. He just whips a pass across court. And Mikey Dixon sent it home. I like that. The guys point to the passer. And says, hey, thank you, buddy. Appreciate that dime. He gave me a great dime, and I was able to knock it down. Jake Stone in for Dixon. Excuse me. Freyer has not done the scoring tonight, but he's done a lot of the little things. It seems like. Whenever he's on the floor, the team goes off and, and gets an advantage. You know, his plus minus would be off the charts tonight. <laughs> Singing his prayers as he goes over and commits his second foul on the roll. Prayer can't believe this. He goes by him. He doesn't get him there. I checked him on the left arm there a little bit. Did he? Waves at him and yeah, gets that left elbow. Didn't have anything to do with the effect of the no. shot, but. Anytime you make player with a, a contact with a player and is in a shooting motion, you're going to get whistled for the foul. It's, so we've what, seen what, some good play. We've seen some sloppy play. You know, Cardinal sin. You don't foul an outside shooter shooting a three-point shot. Yeah. Uh, little things like that will have to be cleaned up, but you expect some guys to make some, some mental mistakes and have a little rust on their games. Would that have ruined your shot from there, too? I mean, just a little that have thrown you off? Well, yeah. It, it, Kind of when guys come on your side of your vision, you're kind of used to things happening in front of you. Uh, sometimes they, that side challenge, I, 
there's a terminology for that is escaping me right now, but peripheral? Yeah, having somebody come into that your peripheral vision, but is an actual term. But guys take practice shots with one of the coaches challenging them from the side as opposed to always challenging putting a hand up in their face. So you get used to that distraction of somebody coming at you from the from the side like that and have to keep your concentration and knock down your shot. That's not good. No. Rest in peace. I don't know what happened. I think our Stat operators gone home for the evening because they haven't updated the players on the floor. But I'm going to give Midgard 10, 10, 10 boards right now. And, and that's impressive. Uh, make it 11. Jared's on top of it. He, they got 11 rebounds to this guy in his first game at a GCU arena. Our stat broadcaster is frozen. Is anyone surprised of that here in 2020? Tigers almost had a bit of a highlight. Bucket there doesn't go, but they pulled down the rebound. Just 34% shooting for the Tigers. <laughs> they knew they'd be a little bit nervous coming in here, and they'll, and they'll shoot better as the season goes on. They'll do, you know, good things in the, their conference, but they just have not been able to find the range tonight. Midgard there, and Labor puts it back. I'll tell you what, it's, those big guys are kind of fun to watch. They're pounding that ball inside, chewing glass offensively and defensively. And it's just going to be too long for a lot of teams that they're going to go up against. And too much weight. <laughs> the, the weight that uh, Labor dropped, Midgard picked up 270 pounds. <laughs> Driving off the glass. Nice one by Christian. That was a sweet move. Cut through the lane. Not afraid of those big guys. When you're struggling to shoot the ball from the outside, that's where you got to go inside. Get buckets. Laver for three. Oh, Bam. My goodness. Doing from the inside with the follow up and then the ability to go out there and get that ball on the secondary transition and knocking down the three point shot. He's got 11 points now after a slow first half start. Six boards to go along with those 11 points. Prince Moss, side by Jaden Stone. Stone gets some extended minutes here in the second. Poor Oscar. Oscar Paul with that. He shrugs his shoulders. His uh, back up with GCU after uh, being out last season for GCU. Wow, there's been so many new faces to talk about, and a number of them are uh, scoring some buckets here. But uh, we are introducing you to a pretty deep bench for Bryce Drew. Yeah, he got 10 guys that can go to uh, for his basketball club. I'm impressed with all of them. They, they do a nice job playing hard, playing with passion. They always make the right plays tonight, but there's, you can see that they're in the shooting form and where they can be able to move out there on the floors is, is impressive. Yeah, we've talked about Ashbor and mid guard, Dima Zador, also Jaden Stone looking sharp as well in the game. Yeah, I, I like this one here by Midgard because you, you, 270 pounds. You, oh, excuse me. That was Miller Moore down there on, on that particular play going going underneath. And then this is Midgard down here just using his big frame and agility with that size to be able to get to the other side of the bucket and, and f fight that one in. Uh, and I love, you know, this is just a, just a smart real play here by uh, Stone. He, Goes in there, and then McLaughlin says, "He says, let me let me help you out there and clean up that mess on aisle one." He slams that thing home, and this was this is the one I love by Stone right there because that's the one dribble pull up from the jump shot. Then he got another one where he went hard to the basket as well. But you know, this is what you need. You you, you combine some seniors in there uh, with the young player there, and Jaden Stone gives yourself a nice little tandem coming up off your bench, and those guys could do some damage this year. So Midgard, the big seven footer. Uh, he's got six points and 11 boards and, and labor with 11 points and, and seven rebounds. And then you get all these other guys coming in here and, and helping out in various ways. I really like the kid uh, Dima Zador, too. He's, yep. he's nice. And I've talked about the big Ashty. That, that kid is a, is a senior place. Uh, a, a good, strong basketball uh, game. And, and it was something when, you know, you get with labor, but you really, really, really have anybody like that since they probably had, you know, Grandy Glaze and... You know, those cats, the, the, yeah. the Smash Brothers, I think you got Keontae something. Keontae Vernon. Yeah, Keontae Vernon, one of the all-time rebounders for the GCU Lopes. I think you're going to have something like that, a little duo down there, the 33 and 25 running down the floor. 
every three point shot that GCU makes, Copper State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, please go to giving.gcu.edu. Back to 15, going to the line though are the Tigers. That one drops. Prince Moss. Seven points for Moss. And they're, they're back at that full yes. court press. Get some reps, run that baseline. And I didn't run the baseline. After that made free throw, you can run that baseline. Big fella stayed in one spot. And Tigers did a good job setting down all those passing lanes. Good teaching moment here for Coach Drew and his staff. You don't mind that timeout in a 15 point. You got a 15 point advantage. Better to take the timeout than force a, a poor pass that leads to a bucket or, or a turnover gives them the ball back. So. Got plenty of timeouts and with their excuse me, 13 point advantage after those made free throws. Set up to play a little differently. Uh, Tom Chambers next to Tiger King. Uh, Tiger King. <laughs> Only not once the Tiger King. I think the mullets are the, uh, the yeah, uh, <laughs> similarity. Twin there. mullets. Got the hockey here. Could be cousins. Yeah. Oh wow. I didn't say that. Did, did you uh, watch that, that documentary? I didn't. I refused uh, to watch I, it. I didn't watch it. Yeah. I, I think we were the two people. Uh, Probably only two yeah. in the country, yeah. right? During the whole shutdown that didn't yeah. watch that. Yeah, I, I, feel I, I like why. Kate also didn't watch it, apparently. So good. Three of us. All right. That's why we make such a good group. Uh, wow, and, and. look at that. That's a hundred right there. Left hand. Yeah, he, he, just, <laughs> he just put that thing down and threw that right shoulder into the smaller defender and had his way with him. Torture chamber. I was reminded of the fact that we were too busy watching the last dance. Yeah, <laughs> last dance was good. I got a little, uh, some cameos in there. there. Yeah, that's 240 and skinny. Looking good. Guard again. <laughs> it's like seems like the ball either he finds the ball or the ball finds him. He got himself a dozen boards. I think Kate has some some uh, background on, on Coach Drew. Well, yeah, you're talking about Scott's playing days. There's another guy who grew up playing, watching us Scott play. I mean, I'm tr I'm not really good at math. You know, he must have been like two years old, and you must have been only eight years old, right? <laughs> Scott, probably your YMCA hey. days, not North Carolina, I'm I, sure. Right? I think there's only a four or five year uh, age wow. difference there, Kate. I'll have you know. Yeah, but that's what I'm, I was trying to give you. I was saying I don't know how he admired you as a player because you guys are like the same age. I'm trying. I'm trying to help you here. Yeah, I think but he was point nice. Being, he was saying he always admired your style of play out there, and he was excited when he was coming over to the program because you'd be following the games out here. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I, I told I you my math isn't good. If I messed <laughs> up on that compliment, I haven't seen you in forever. I was really trying. I gotta trying. get my waiters on now, Kate. Yeah, <laughs> so thick here. Wow. Well, you know, he, he uh, Coach Drew went after he got the job. He did reach out to me and said that he did enjoy watching me play, and I think because oh. he was a son of a coach. It was the only reason he probably enjoyed watching me play. I should have Michael Jordan was the main attraction to get him to tune in. But being someone who's, uh, it, you know, pays attention to the little details on the floor, you know, I, I talk about some of these guys, you look at their stats, and you go, hey, I don't know if they ain't going to help this club. But when you actually see them play, you know that they're going to be able to contribute. And that's kind of how I always pride my game. When I was on the floor, I just wanted the score to stay even or grow, the lead to grow, when I had my time on the floor. I didn't care if I scored or, or what, what my stat line was. I just wanted to be an important part of the team's success. Be a part of it. I'm sure that this now very deep bench for GCU, each one of the players wanted to do exactly that. How about Alessandro Labor in the second half, Scott? 11 points and three boards. Yeah, much, much better second half. He calmed himself down. And, he probably deferred a little bit to Javon in that first half because uh, he had the hot hand going. Now he's kind of, Javon's cooled off a little bit and he's picked up the scoring. Ooh. Oh, bad dribble handoff there leads Such to a turnover. Yeah. 
Driving and putting it home, Kelton Edwards. Whoa. Showing some ability to rise up to the 10th floor and throw that down. I mentioned Midgard in his rebounding performance tonight. It's a new career high. 14 unofficially. Backing in now. Foul called. 345 to go. The Lopes have opened up the lead 59-44 over Grambling State. We'll be right back. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. Time winding down here at GCU Arena right now. The Lopes on top of Grambling State, 59-44 with under four to play. And on this eve of Thanksgiving, well, I'll tell you what, we are thankful to be watching college basketball. It's great to see everyone out here um, or tuning in right now on Fox 10 Extra. And tomorrow, the players after this big game will get a little break to enjoy the Thanksgiving activities. And we all know food is uh, center stage tomorrow. So we talk to the players about what they want to see on the table tomorrow. Mikey Dixon saying sweet potatoes. A lot of votes for the mac and cheese and uh, rice with the stuffing coming in there. And guys, for me, I got to go stuffing and sweet potatoes as well. I also always vote whatever side dish I'm not in charge of. That's my favorite because no headache, no stress comes with it. What about you guys? What are you looking forward to tomorrow? I know first and foremost, we'll all be counting our blessings in this crazy year. But food-wise, what's on your mind? Yeah, I'm, I'm a big sweet potato guy. I, I like the candy yams when they when they put the marshmallows on top and then brown yeah, the nice. marshmallows on top of them. That, that's my favorite right there. I can go for two or three helpings of those in, a, in one sit, sitting. How do you feel about green bean casserole? Love green bean yeah. casserole. I was almost going to go green bean casserole bowl. That's, that's, a, that's a close second a, for me. If it's, if it's made right, if it's too, too, too mushy, then too, I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't right? dig it. I don't no, dig it. No. But if you, can, if you can get it right, then it's out of this world. Yeah, there's a little controversy that, that's even going to be served tomorrow. And I'll tell you, I don't, I don't know if I'm showing up. <laughs> With a boycott I, Thanksgiving? <laughs> I hope I delivered the message. <laughs> but, uh, I'm sure you will not be disappointed. I don't think I will. Under three and a half to go. Hope you en you're you enjoying GCU basketball. OK, uh, uh, forget the size oh. for a second. What, what part of the turkey do you like? Nice power move to the basket there. Are, stop, are you a breast stop. guy? Of course I am. I'm a breast guy. You like the turkey breast. OK. Yeah. See, I, I, I kind of like getting that big, that big turkey leg. Really? I, I kind of like getting that big turkey leg, and I'll turkey put it. I put it. I'll put it in my right fist and just gnaw on that bad boy. Wow, look at you! Just... Bam! Whoa. Sean Miller Moore. Ooh, they having some fun oh, out there now, now, aren't they? they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a couple big dunks in this game. Tigers want a timeout. Ian McLaughlin started out that rim wrecking, and Sean Miller Moore. I talked about he having some live legs. He went up and flushed that one. Big time. Dante Jackson, the head coach, kind of shrugging his shoulders over. Hey, guys, uh, 2.52 to go. It's like his um, team checked out of his ball down. game for a second there. He had to get their, get their attention back and say, we play a whole 40, a whole 40 minutes in, in this program. Lopes five of six uh, from the field here in their last five of six. So, and, you know, neither team has, has, has shot the ball all that well. I mean, Lopes only shooting 41% on the game, but 
you know, GSU's only shoot 32.7% on the game. So all those numbers are going to improve. Even some little jitters, guys with some tired legs. We're playing in this arena probably for, we've always seen some smaller programs come into the GC arena and struggle from the field as well. Even without the Havocs, we're still having a tough time with all this crowd noise. I have to admit, there's some characters that are cutouts. I, 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 I don't know. I just maybe I don't go to all the movies. I, I just don't know some of the cutouts. We're, we're, we're getting old. <laughs> we're getting old. Bear. I think some of them are these uh, influencers, and Instagram influencers. We have no chance at knowing who those people are. We see Chance the Rapper's here. Yeah, but oh, you can't oh, know no Chance the Rapper. I mean, this is some, like a Kardashian, I'll pick that up. But oh, yeah. outside of oh, I do know Chance the Rapper. And there's, that's a chick from Frozen. The chick from uh, Frozen. Hey, <laughs> the chick what's, from Frozen. What's her name? I don't know her name. You know uh, her name? That chick. Yeah. Elsa. Hey, hey, look who's in the house. Uh, zero to Hero. That's, that, right. that's Kate's favorite guy. Is it really? I think so. Mm. I saw a grimacing kind of Jared Martin as well here. It's very cantankerous. You know he's with Cal California Baptist. Yeah, I know. Now. He's gone to that. He's yeah. gone over to the dark side Betty. on this, hasn't he? Uh, isn't she pleasant? Yeah. Jared Martin. We got to face him a couple times this year. He's on that staff over there at Cal yeah. Baptist. We, got, and we were out, out of Aussie player for a while, and we got one this year, right? Didn't yeah. they, they added an Jayden Aussie? Stone. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. There you go. Trying to force one that time. 63-44, the opener for GCU. They're in control. That's a call. Yeah, I got McMillan on that one. But that was a good job that time. You know, Edwards just says, I'm tired of missing these shots from the outside. I'm going to just attack the basket, get that body contact. Sometimes that's all you need is a couple free throws to get yourself going from the field. Now, it won't help them in this particular game, but that's the right attitude to have the rest of the season going forward. And if you're struggling to shoot the ball, you can't continue to pound away from the outside. you got to go inside and try to get a bucket inside or uh, opportunity to get yourself to the free throw line. Bryce Hokepo checks in. Familiar to Lopes fans. Chance McMillan on the court, as you mentioned, and Rashad Smith. FEMA Community College by way of Hamilton High School, the Chandler, Arizona native. Millen up high. Oh, Smith didn't put it home. Not too far away from the bucket. I hardly recognized Okpo out there on the floor. He's, he's got a different look. He's changed yeah. his hairstyle up here with the with the braided look. <laughs> Took me a moment to, to, to spot him out there on the floor without the jersey net name on the back. Oh, that was lofty, Labor. Well, Labor has been a beast here in the second half. You see why he was such a, you know, lack player of the year, preseason player of the year a year ago. He's not happy only being on that first team selection this year. He's come out here. Maybe it's a little less pressure for him to come out and get to a good start here in the second half. But this is a, a, a well rounded Lopes basketball club. I've liked what I've seen here in opening night. 14 points for Labor, four boards. As Edwards had a nice bucket there for the Tigers. Picked off by Grambling State. Right in. Teardrop in for Terrion Randolph. Approaching a minute to go here in the opener. One minute. One minute. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. 36 minutes tonight. Breaks the one man press who gets his team up in the first half and this is one of those timeouts and they just want to get a sub on the floor from labor get get game a couple more ticks on that clock and so you're gonna go get another play probably block you we're just talking about the 36 minutes he's played tonight probably didn't expect to play 36 minutes but things just run better when javon blackshear jr's out there on the floor that's got to feel good. I mean, these guys have waited a long time to go against another opponent and come out here. Wasn't always pretty, but at the end of the day, they, the game was never in doubt for the Lopes. Uh, Grambling cut at the three. They kept their poise, and no one splintered, started pointing fingers, and those are the types of things you like to see. Continued to work hard. 
picked off. But yeah, the shot clock's about to blow up. Yep, two. He's got to, they got to throw it off. They're not going to. How about Ash? He's going to give him a foul there? Oh, oh my. Now that goodness. I don't like. 15 rebounds for a Midgard. A career high for him. That's the most for GCU since uh, Oscar Freire had 15 against UMKC back on March 8th of 2018. The yeah, kid did some, he, he did his job on the glass and yep. give him an extra peanut butter and jelly sandwich on the way back oh, to the yeah. dorms tonight. He earned it. Wow. At least that's what we used to get. I don't know, 30, that was 30 years ago. We used to get PB and J's for our post game. Yeah. I bet these kids probably get sub sandwiches yeah. now. I think that you go times grape have changed. Or, you go grape or strawberry? I'm grape. Yeah. Oh, really? Absolutely. Old school, old school. Yeah, and don't put any peanuts in my peanut butter. I like oh, it creamy. Yeah, chunky, you don't like I don't that? like the chunky, no, yeah, sir. I'm with you. And it's got to be Jif. I don't mess with anything but Jif. I am totally GIF. with you on that. It, that's why we, that's why our chemistry is so good up I here, know. my friend. Who knew it was the peanut butter? My brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this year, I had to switch to wheat bread, though. I've always been a white really? bread guy. Just this, yeah, this year? I had to switch to, yeah, I had to, switch to, to wheat. Oh, good for you. Thinking healthy. How about free throw line? 10 of 11 from the free throw line this half for GCU after we talked about their opening half where they didn't start too strong. Yeah, I guess that's just, that's that extra adrenaline, maybe a little nerves, maybe a combination of both for different players experience in different ways, but they're going to be a good free throw shooting team this year. Travell Cunningham, it's the front end. 19 point lead. Yeah, so many different ways. And you, you, you're thinking, I'm thinking, you know, who, whoa, who we whoa, go. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Joe, Joker's whoa. getting a beat down over there. Security. <laughs> Definitely need campus security to come take care of that. Uh, you know, but, but a lot of different guys and a lot of different, a, a lot of good things out here. Oak Pole with the, the long shot there from the outside. And, couldn't get that one to go. He was determined to get to that scoring column. And a couple guys that did not get in that scoring column tonight. But they'll have plenty of opportunities this year. I think the Slopes team's going to play a lot of different guys. They're going to stay healthy. You know, that's always the key for any, any teams to have success is stay away from that injury bug. And dribble it out, and the Lopes are victorious. 69 53, the final score. And Bryce Drew now 7 and 2 in debuts as a head coach, and he's successful in his debut as head coach of Grand Canyon University. Yeah, that's got to feel good for Coach Drew and his staff. They've been waiting a long time for this night. And to come out on the right side it just makes it even sweeter. They can't even do the uh, the post game handshake with the players anymore. No, they just kind of line up in a circle and maybe do an old the old fashioned. Uh, a bow to one another. <laughs> this is uh, this is new, unprecedented. Huh? Some fist bumps. Yeah, they're doing a bow. Oh, they're, maybe they're just, just bowing for prayer or something. Is that what taking uh, a prayer down there, thinking no one got hurt wow. tonight? That's pretty cool. That is all about the uh, mission and vision of the university. Coach Schilling is leading it. Post game prayer. Wow. Well, I'll tell you, 2020 is going to have a lot of different sights and sounds and looks, and that was a pretty cool one right there. That was definitely, that would, uh, I got to tell you, that kind of moved me a little bit. We're all been dealing with with a lot here, and uh, that put an exclamation point on it. Let's send it down to Kate Lawler. All right, thank you guys. Well, you would think with the height difference, we'd have that six feet social distance, but we're still playing in St. Harris. I'm joined by preseason all black first team honoree, Alessandra Lamer. First of all, congratulations. After 259 days, you are back officially playing basketball. How did it feel just to be out on the court tonight? I mean, it feels great. You know, after, like I just said, 256, 259 days, six days, whatever it was, about like not playing basketball. It felt great to be out here with my with my family, my teammates, to play and get a dub in the first game. There's a lot to work on, but, you know, after almost a year without basketball, like actual games, you know, it, it feels good. And you guys score the victory for Coach Drew in his debut. What has he brought to this program? You know, we came along together. We came with uh, some really good recruits. You know, we started to, to start, uh, we're still trying to be like a chemistry that is coming, that is going to come like in the next few games. 
you know, it's just great to be out here. It's very cool because back in 2017, the first game you started for GCU was against Grambling, and now you're back out there. You have started 90 of 91 games. We have seen you grow so much throughout the program. Your senior year right now, these are kind of crazy times, but what do you hope the Lopes go out there and achieve this year? I mean, our goal is always the same one. Uh, win the WAC uh, tournament, go to the NCAA tournament, try to win a few games. And I think this year with the team that we got, if we keep, if we keep improving like we are, I think it's achievable. And then lastly, you've mentioned just the chemistry and you guys coming together. We just saw a really neat moment between the two teams, center court here. I know basketball uh, on your mind right now, but also the world going through a lot right now. What did that mean to you guys to just go out there and how has the team come through and come together during these unsettling times? I mean, I think it was just blessed and happy to be out here trying to compete when, you know, a lot of countries around the world are shutting down again, lockdown, and we're just able to compete and play the, the sport that we love. So we're just blessed about it. All right. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Uh, we wish you the best of luck and hope to see you out there on Saturday. All right. GCU with their first game of the 2020-21 season in the books, and it was a victorious one. 69-53 over Grambling State. We'll be back here inside GCU Arena in just a few moments to wrap this one up. Don't go anywhere. We're still talking college hoops. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy. <sighs> 69-53, the final score and the debut of head coach Bryce Drew in the first game for him, of course, in the uh, GCU era, uh, a successful one. Albeit we saw a little bit of uh, everything, I guess, a, a first game would bring, right? So yes. Some of the issues at the free throw line, but that, that really improved in the second half. Got a little sloppy, some turnovers. Well, not maybe as high as maybe we expected from a turnover perspective, but we saw a lot of really, really good things here in the opener. It's going to be, ex it's going to be exciting to see these things develop. Uh, I'm very impressed um, with this ball club. Uh, I think they have some very good, talented players that uh, know how to maximize their strengths while minimizing their weaknesses. 15 turnovers wasn't great, but I like the fact that they really got on the glass. They show a moxie that um, uh, is impressive. The uh, big fella, um, the big Ashty. Uh, Midgard, he does a nice job, obviously chewing glass with the 15 boards that you mentioned, the GCU high we hadn't seen around here in a long time. And he plays outside of his uh, his face. You think a guy that's that big wouldn't be as, as mobile, but he's got some good mobility to him. You know, it was a, a really nice to see Javon Blackshear, you know, go 36 minutes, get everybody involved, called his own number in the first half, and then he got labor going in the second half. A lot of guys off that pitch can contribute as well. Speaking of Alessandro Labor, let's check out our Copper State Credit Union player of the game. 18 points, eight rebounds, six of eight from the field. Yeah, I really turned it on in the second half, like we talked about, 14 of those 18 points coming in the second half. Uh, the six of eight field goals, I like those a high percentage shots. He knocked down the three. It was about his only outside shot. Then, then he that little push along the baseline and then smart enough to go back after it. That one it was, was great because didn't settle for a little jump shot after the player went for the steal, continue to put the pressure on the defense and hanging around the rim, getting those tip ins. That's my favorite shot for labor right there. When the ball's down on the wing or inside, it comes back out and finds him on the outside and he knocks that down. If he can do that consistently, yeah. um, Lopes will be right there in that uh, WAC championship uh, cont contention again. Javon Blackshear, 11 points, uh, seven assists in the game, and right from the opening jump. I mean, he has not showed 
and he definitely all the last season didn't show those freshman jitters. I mean, he, he, he's truly looking like a floor general right now. He really does, and it seems as though the uh, coaching staff has got the confidence in them already handed them the keys to the yeah. bus and say, okay, you, you drive us where we want to go. It was 36 minutes. I love that steal he gets and that play to Mikey Dixon. We saw that one and a half. He had three steals uh, in the game, and then this one all geeks just gets that, that catch and shoot my favorite one right there because he was waiting for Gabe to turn his head he had yeah. to kind of hang in the air it looked a little awkward but finally put it on Gabe's chin where he's able to grab it and go uh, put it in the basket but just a real good player to have on a floor I can't believe he's only a sophomore incredible it's going to be a lot of fun to see this team develop let's revisit our Sanderson Ford three keys to the game Brought to you by Sanderson Ford. The best play in a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. Yeah, they got a little sloppy at times with the basketball. You expect that. 15 mm. turnovers. Would love you to see it at, at 12, but 15 is not bad at all. Uh, and I think that they're going to you – know, some of those were because guys were a little out of place, throwing the ball where they thought guys would be, and they weren't. And then the commitment to defend, that was impressive. They hold a team to under 40% shooting and just crushed them on the glass, and, and you like that. And what you're starting to see – that all for one, one for all mentality and making the extra pass, coming back in, maybe getting a block shot when someone got out of position, you know, getting excited when a teammate makes a good play, everybody up off the bench, reading guys coming off the floor. Those are the kind of things that start to develop the chemistry that Coach Drew's going to want from his team when they have to get in tough scrapes when the chips are against them on the road. They'll have that chemistry to be able to fight through those moments. Now, as, as uh, we are all experiencing uh, and uh, dealing with COVID-19, the uh, basketball world also is dealing with this. There is a game scheduled for Saturday. There was originally a game scheduled for Saturday. We hope there's a game played on Saturday. Right now, we are going through some protocols with an opponent. Uh, we hope to have definitive word, but we don't have it as of right now. So we encourage you to go to GCULopes.com, the social media. The information will be pushed out to you to tune in and just keep it right here, right where you're watching on Saturday at about 6 p.m. Tip off 5.30. Kate will have the pregame show. Our fingers are crossed, much like yours are at home as we, we deal with this. And this is, uh, as we wrap things up here, this is, uh, boy, this is great to see everybody, some familiar faces. We would love to have a packed arena but, uh, man, you, you, we needed this more than anything. I'm thankful to have college basketball back. Looking for a great Thanksgiving tomorrow. Yep. Happy Thanksgiving happy to Thanksgiving, you. Happy Thanksgiving, partner. And happy Thanksgiving to you as well. That'll do it from GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes are victorious. They beat the Tigers 69-53. to Please join us again, perhaps on Saturday. Kate will have the pregame show at 5.30, tip-off scheduled for 6. But until then, for Kate Longworth, Scott Williams and our entire crew, I'm Barry Beachell, wishing you all a very wonderful Thanksgiving. Good night, everyone.